University of North Texas football is brought to you by Southwest Airlines with low fares on every flight, everywhere it flies. Fly Southwest, the low fare airline. By Gatorade Thirst Quencher, who reminds you that sweat loves company. Life's a sport. Drink it up. By Miller Lite, the official beer of the Eagles. We've got Miller Lite. We're in Texas. Life is good. And by GTE. It's amazing what we can do together. This is Bryant-Denny Stadium on the campus of the University of Alabama in Tuscaloosa, where today the North Texas Eagles take on the Crimson Tide of Alabama. And for the second straight week, the Eagles are facing a Southeastern Conference team. Hello again, everybody. I'm Merle Harmon, along with Gil Brandt and Ed Budinero. Well, Alabama has won 12 national championships, including the one in 1993, and has also won 20 SEC championships. A great honor for a great team, but UNT has been playing the likes of great teams like KU and Oklahoma and LSU. And you know, uh, Gil, this has got to be good for the UNT program. Oh, there's no question about it. The Eagles uh, coaches, the players, alumni, uh, they're very excited about playing the big guys each week. Uh, and they're getting a real taste of what it takes to become a winner in Division I football. And I don't know how you can start any place better than the Tuscaloosa, Alabama, where Alabama Alabama has won 57 straight games at one time. It's really something here. You know, each week we pick out a couple of players for Gill to give us a scouting report on. Who have you picked today? Well, I think we have to look at Josh Gully, number 12, and I think he's the future of this program. He had a very, very good game last week, threw for 234 yards, and number 43, Brett Renfro. Brett Renfro is their leading tackler. For Alabama, it's Todrick Malone, number 80. He is a big play player, and, and, and he's a he's probably their fastest player. And number 87, you're going to be hearing a lot of him in the next two years, Dwayne Rudd. He leads their team in tackles and in, with four sacks. We're just minutes away from game time here in Tuscaloosa, and we'll return to Bryant-Denny Stadium right after this. Alabama won the toss, deferred, will kick off to North Texas at the south end zone. And kicking off is William Watts, better known as a wild thing. And he booms one way back into the end zone. It'll be down there by Brian Smith. North Texas will have the ball first and 10 at its own 20-yard line to put the offense in motion first this afternoon. And the offense today will be led by this young man, Josh Gully, number 12, a freshman from Grand Prairie. And those are his numbers. He started last week against LSU and did a commendable job. Merle, don't be surprised to see Josh Gully try to go deep on this opening play of the game here. Burtis McKinney and Troy Redwine, Brian Smith are the wideouts. Here's the offensive line, and let's see what happens here. Three, four wideouts out, and... Waters, he overshoots Waters at about the 40-yard line. He had him open. Merle, he had the tight end wide open. What it was, it was a uh, two wide receiver set on the left side of the field, and the tight end just releases down, uh, down the center and, and beats a strong safety. Now the defensive line, and watch for Shannon Brown, number 75. We've talked about the other two big linemen up there. The linebackers are very solid. John Waters is a Texan. And uh, we will be keeping an eye on him. Fernando Bryant, the veteran, the quarterback. Here we go, and flags are dropped. And we do not get the second play of the game underway. Okay. So did he say 12 minutes in the huddle? What, what it is, it's diversion, I think that they call it. Uh, Al Ford is the uh, the referee out today, there today, and uh, I've known Al a long time. He's from Huntsville, Alabama, and is, is one of the better officials in the Southeastern Conference. But what they have to do is get out of the huddle quickly and not have a 12th man in there. Second down, 15. 
Gully to throw, throws into the flat. The ball is dropped by Troy Redwine. Now the village board, keys to the game, Gil. Well, I think the keys are for North Texas to be able to block number 75, Shannon Brown, number 94, Kendrick Burton, and number 99, Eric Curley. That's the keys. The second thing is they have not, they've got to stop giving up big plays on defense. And, and for the off. For the Alabama team, it, it's it's they've we've got to do something to get the pressure off Josh Gully is is uh, is what it amounts to. You have to block that front four. And Gene Stallings wants a more balanced offense. He is not pleased with the offense at all. Third down, 15. Gully on the draw. Goes to Bo Harrison. Harrison's not going anyplace. He's going to lose some yardage to that big defensive line, and it's a very tough one. Plus the linebackers, Ralph Staten, 41 who is a junior from Sims, Alabama. An outstanding linebacker is in there to make the play, and it's fourth down at about 16. Well, let me tell you about their defensive line. Uh, 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 number 97, Van, who, or, uh, Van Bowden is not in the game, uh, is a backup player, was a Southeastern Conference Player of the Year uh, or a week last year in one game. Michael Vaughn is back deep to, try, to take the punt from Toby Gowen. Gowen kicking from his own five-yard line, sends it downfield, and it's going to bounce at midfield and roll out of bounds at about the 49, between the 48 and 49-yard line of Alabama. And the Crimson Tide takes over on offense for the first time today with great field position. A crowd of about 60,000 on hand right now. That's Brian Bergdorf, the quarterback, which has been a problem for the Crimson Tide. Brian, you can see the numbers on him, but he did not start last week. Now here are his receivers, and Curtis Brown and Todrick Malone can really fly. The offensive line anchored by Joel Holiday, and the first play sees Riddle carrying the ball, and Riddle gets across the midfield stripe. The ball will be marked near the 46-yard line of North Texas. Here's the way the Eagles line up defensively. Coleman. McLaughlin, Murphy, and Hudson, and we'll see an awful lot today of Clay Jennings up there also at a tackle spot. The linebackers are still solid, headed by Brent Renfro. Rodney Maynard is moving over to the weak cornerback spot vacated by Moji Gibson. Gibson is missing in action. Swing pass comes out to the right flag. And chased out of bounds is Todrick Malone, number 80. I think he has it up for a first down, however, and he does. Well, that's just a play to set up something later in the day. You know, Homer Smith, who's the offensive coordinator for the Alabama Tide, has had a great record. He's a very, very smart uh, uh, offensive coach, and uh, you could just tell what he's trying to do, something for the future. Okay, the linesman had originally walked out there to spot the ball, and it would have been a first down for Alabama, but instead it's a third down in the length of the football. But now the Crimson Tide goes right up the middle with Dennis Riddle, number 29. And let's see after they unload if he has the distance or not. Scott Murphy, 58, made the stop for North Texas. And by the way, Dennis Riddle is replacing Sherman Williams. And boy, does a Tide miss him. Right. Sherman Williams, an outstanding football player, but let me tell you about Dennis Riddle. Freshman, first time he carried the ball, 21-yard touchdown run. How do you beat that? Well, I'll tell you how the coach would like to have He'd not like to have him go a little more north and south. First down, Riddle again. Up his own left tackle, gets inside the 35 to the 33. Behind the blocking of Joel Holiday and Maurice Belser. Well, it looks, like, Ray uh, on the tackle. it looks like uh, everybody has been looking at tapes because they're running the same play that LSU did the week before. This is the same play that LSU ran so successfully left and right. Uh, the only difference is the number. Number two, or number three, I believe, was carrying it last week, and number 29 this week. Second down, about two, possibly three, a long two, we'll call it. Motion man is West, who is a real flyer. Here comes Riddle again. Riddle going for the first down. He's not going to have it, I don't believe. But he's short. short. Sterling Guest, number five, the middle linebacker on the side. Got a very good play there. It's about third and one is what it is right now. And and this is where you've got to stop him. And, and, and is what you do. You set the tone for the game right now if you can stop him. Third down one. You go for the big one here? No, I think they'll try to make a first down is what they'll try to do. It's playing the way they are anyway. Chad Key wide to the left side. 
They go to the run. That's Riddle again. And Riddle gets the first down. He is all the way down to the 27-yard line. A gain of almost five. Willis Hudson, 56, the senior from Marshall, makes the play. What it is, it's kind of a student body right, but it, it run it inside. And Riddle, who's a good cutback runner, cuts it back into the hole and picks up about five yards for a first down. No this score. is a, a good offensive line, not a great offensive line. This is not quite like the LSU offensive line. First quarter, no score. Bergdorf is the quarterback for the Tide. Makes to the back and gets knocked down. Brought down by number 48, Clay Jennings. So Jennings, Jennings comes up with a big play. That was a coverage sack there. If we'll see this, everybody's covered. He's trying to hit the wide receiver on the left side of the field here, and it's just a coverage sack. Bergdorf couldn't throw the ball. You know, Bergdorf, two years ago, uh, was the outstanding player in the Gator Bowl game. He came in uh, for the injured quarterback, Barkley, and was the outstanding player in the game. Shows you what kind of depth they have. Jennings hits him for an eight-yard loss. Second down, about 18 at the 34 of UN. This time it does go to Riddle. Riddle breaks the tackle, a flag in the play at the 30-yard line. I think it's a holding call error is what it is. Roderick Maynard, number 27, the primary tackler. What it is is just a little delay draw is what it is. They fake it to the first man through, and, and they get uh, they get a holding call here. Actually, I, it's it's a, it's kind of a uh, gift because uh, Sterling Guest really wasn't in position to make the play. They'd already ran by him, but uh, they called holding on that play, I believe. Well, let's see. Where was the hold? At... We didn't get a wave off. It's second down and eight. Here comes a fake reverse. Riddle on the carry. Riddle is forced out of bounds around the 24 by Roderick Maynard, number 27, the senior from Austin. Ten minutes, 24 seconds to go in the first quarter. Here it is. It's a fake reverse is what it is. They try to get the flow going the other way. And, and, and again, this is probably setting up a play. Number one, Marcel West is one of the fastest men in the country. Two years ago, he was the th had the third fastest time in the 100-meter uh, uh, dash in the, in the country two years ago. Curtis Brown, who can really fly, is coming as a wideout going to the left side for Alabama. A slot left, and Riddle is the running back. Bergdorf under a rush, but runs away from it, and then he goes down by Willis Hudson, number 56, who throws him back at the 33-yard line. It'll be fourth down, a loss of almost 10. Again, and it we was have a, a flag. coverage sack is what it was. To here. I think they're going to call holding, but Bergdorf goes back to throw, and, and they just uh, they, they try to block him with a back. Uh, which is kind of unusual to block Willis Hudson, and he just uh, gets loose and makes a sack. Good effort by Hudson. Hudson has not played very well the last couple of weeks, and uh, he looks like he's come alive today. So it is fourth down as the Eagles decline the penalty to bring up a fourth down and a kicking situation for Alabama. And coming in for the field goal try is Michael Proctor, one of the outstanding kickers in the nation. He's hit seven out of eight this year, the longest night, uh, 53 yards, 1993. This year, his longest about 46, as I recall. He hit a 60-yarder in high school. Boy, he's something else. He's going the distance for this one. It looks pretty good. And it is not good. It veers off to the right. That ball, when it left his foot, looked like it was right on target. So we have a timeout. There's no score. 9.53 to go in the first quarter. Here in Tuscaloosa, now for a Gatorade sideline report. Let's go down to Ed Budinero. Ed? Thank you very much, bro. I can tell you what, the defense is fired up, and one of the reasons is one of the leading tacklers, Renfro, Brett Renfro, was thought not to be able to play because of his knee hurt last week at LSU. Well, he's back in, and this defense is responding to his presence. Merle, Gill, back up to you. All right, Ed. And you know, Matt Simon was talking about that on the plane coming over here, about the, he can't get the guys out of the lineup. Everybody wants to play. Well, I, I think that shows you what kind of people you have on your team, the people that want to play when they're hurt. You know, this is a team that hasn't taken a dive. First and 10 for UNT on the Eagle 32-yard line. Troy Redwine is split out wide to the right side. There's a slot right, and now in motion. 
Goes uh, the running back with one left. The pass completed. The ball at the 37-yard line. And a gain of not much. Merle Remby made, did a good job as, as a blocker on that left side because uh, he had to pick up that, that defensive end who widened out and rushed the passer and almost got caught Gully, but Gully got rid of it. That shows you a little poise. It's only a four-yard gain, but it's better than a big loss. Here's Gully, and you'll see the rusher coming from the left side of your screen there. Good good catch by the, the tight end on that particular play. Brian Waters gets the job done. Here's that forward pass pitch straight ahead. Going to Bo Harrison. He gets to the 40-yard line. He'll be short of a first down by a couple of yards. You know, we, we talked with Bo Harrison yesterday uh, after the workout, and one of the things he said to us, he said, I tape every game, I send it home to my mom, and she watches it. So, <laughs> you know, that that's that's great. I'm, I'm glad to hear things like that. Well, we'd like to say hello to his mom and Donna Beaumont. Glad to have you watching UNT football. Virtus McKinney wide to the right side on third down and two. Harrison comes in motion to the left side. Gully to throw in the pocket is about to go under and is finally sacked at about the 37 by Daryl Blackburn. That'll be his seventh sack of the year. He's a junior from Huntsville. And here you talk about a guy that wants to play. He's got a bad kidney and he wants to play. Right. What, what happens? This is a great defensive line. And, and Blackburn just gets an inside escape there. And, and they just uh, they just don't block him. And, uh, and, it, and it's a sack is what it amounts to. Fourth down and five after a loss of three. Michael Vaughn is back deep for Toby Gowen's punt. He'll be kicking from the 35. He gets it away. I don't know if it's partially blocked or not, but he just barely got it out of there, and it finally rolls down to the Alabama 32. So the Crimson Tide will have possession for the second time today. Well, I think what happened there, again, they looked at the LSU film, and they tried to block a, 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 block a kick last week and almost did and, and, and got a big play out of it. And so when, when that happens, people come back and they try to do the same thing the next week against you because there's a few they can block a kick. 31 yard punt. Boy, what a gorgeous day it is here in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. First and 10 for the tide, and the run doesn't get very much. So the defense of UNT is really showing well here this afternoon. You know, Merle, uh, it, it, this is a very unusual Alabama team. As an example, uh, their their offensive production is 10 yards per game less than their less than their defense, and so what what what's happening is they're just not getting anything going on offense at all. You saw Josh Niblett carry that ball for a yard gain. We'll tell you more about what they're doing there in a moment. Second down and one, and the handoff goes to Riddle. Riddle hits the left side, keeps barreling straight ahead behind blockers, but that. We're sort of closes up because Brett Renfro, number 43, and Stephen Hunt, number 90, are in there to stop the play. Now, you saw a moment ago, number 16, Niblett, lined up in the backfield. Now, Gene Stallings has an interesting concept. Actually, Niblett is a tight end, but he lines up in the backfield as a tight end rover. Right, but he doesn't really carry the ball from scrimmage much, but right, he did that. They call him a rover, and what he is is really an extra blocker is what he is. Third down, about three. Motion to the right. Bergdorf is going down again. Anthony Coleman, number 60, the senior from Dallas Ryan High School, makes the tackle. You know, the pass rush has been non existent for the last two games, and here we are, two, uh, three series, and you've got two, uh, two sacks, so speaks highly of the defense. Coleman. playing well right now. Coleman is second sack of the year. The loss makes it fourth down and eight. Brian Smith is back to take the punt from Hayden Stockton. Stockton. Who sends an end over end to Brian Smith. 33, 40. And finally goes down near the 44. Tony Johnson, number five, a tight end on the special team. Comes down to make the tackle. We have no score in this game in the first quarter in Tuscaloosa. 5.54 left to play in the first period. 5.54 to go in the first quarter. No score. UNT has Jason Mills at quarterback now, number 12, or rather number 14. And he hands off to Bo Harrison. He didn't go any place. 
Merle, it's really tough, and, and, and we've said this two or three times. You know, there's three players on that defensive line that are going to be drafted into pro football next year, and it is really tough. So you've got to try to run the ball and, and do something here. And the backups aren't bad either. That's Chris Hood, number 34, who's actually started some games this year. Yes, he has. Jason, Jason Mills, uh, that's his uh, statistical report for the year. Man in motion is Brian Smith. Mills to throw, throws long down the sideline to Brian Smith. He makes the catch, but he's out of bounds. Merle, he cut the ball in the 24-yard line. Well, let me say something about, about the Chris Hood who made the sack on that last play, or the tackle on that last play. He was a four-time high school All-State player here in Alabama. And, and he's a, a great, great, uh, great, great basketball player also. Brian Smith making a great over-the-shoulder catch, twisting and turning to pull it in, but unfortunately was out of bounds. It is third down, 11. Bo Harrison, the running back. Motion man is Waters. Complete to Waters, the tight end, into Alabama territory, but I think the well, it's going to be close. It's going to be close. The spot is going to determine whether it's a first down or not. Deshae Townsend, number two, the weak side quarterback, made the hit. Brian Waters from Waxahachie. Here it is. It's, a, it's a, just a swing pass that's coming out of here, and the tight end releases, and uh, and after he catches the ball, makes a great effort to get on upfield. He picks up about four or five yards with just effort is what it is. And he made first the first down. down. Gene uh, doesn't look too happy uh -oh. over there. And if Bo Harrison's mom is watching that tape now, look for that block. Mama, he made a great one on the corner. Redwine is wide to the right. Mills, in, oh, is that, is that inter intercepted and then dropped. Smith, the intended receiver. John Walters, who's a Dallas player. Dallas uh, uh, Lake Highlands High School is the one that almost caught it and then dropped the ball. It's a tip ball here is what it is. And the middle linebacker from Lake Highlands High School, Walters, uh, bats the ball up in the air and then runs it to his own man and drops it. You know, his great-grandfather, or his grandfather, played at North, the University of North Texas. <laughs> and his great-grandfather played here in Alabama. That's mixing it up. <laughs> Second down and ten. Draw Harrison. Nothing. Because Ralph... Staten is in there to make the tackle the linebacker, number 41, and John Walters, number 90, assisting. Well, Staten's a strong side linebacker, and he only weighs about 200 pounds, but he was a second-team all-conference uh, player. What happens here, Harrison's a bad handoff, and he almost fumbles the ball, but you've got to block those linebackers, because if you don't, then the draw play is not going to work. Coylan Grimes is wide to the right side, along with Harrison, along with Smith. Four wideouts, no running backs. Got to throw it in a hurry. Throws it to Redwine, and Redwine is dumped at the 46. About a yard or two, and it'll be fourth down. Ozell Powell, number 78, on the tackle. Merle, again, it's a play that everybody has tried to run, and, and it's, a, it's a route where the wide receiver comes back to the inside. You see him come back there to the inside, but what happens is Redwine is just not strong enough to break the play. Going is back to punt for UNT. Michael Vaughn from Clarksdale, Mississippi, is back for the return, standing on his own 10-yard line. Going, the 12th leading punter of the nation. Pops this one high, a mile high. And that ball is going to be downed inside the five-yard line. Downfield with Philip Littlejohn to cover there. And it'll be Alabama's ball just inside its own five, a 41-yard kick. And we'll be back after these messages from your local station. Well, North Texas has 64 yards per game, is, run, is averaging 64 yards per game running the ball, which is very poor. And today, both clubs are just, well, they just haven't been able to get those holes open. But more than that, it's the breakaway speed of the running backs. And Steger is now in. Brian Steger, number 28, who's a junior from North 
New Brockton, Alabama. Well, Alabama's searching, and I wouldn't be a bit surprised to see if they don't play a new quarterback, Warren Faust, uh, a young man from uh, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, uh, who hasn't really played this year, but I just have a feeling that if Berg Dirks doesn't get something done on this job, uh, and this drive, it will be uh, Faust or Kitchens that come in the game. After a gain of three, second down seven. The pitch comes to the tailback, Steger, and Steger doesn't go very far to the eight-yard line. That's about it. And Roderick Maynard, 27, who's playing the weak quarterback today, in there to make the tackle. Let's see where they spot the ball. Merle, this is just a little pitch here is what it is, and, and Roderick Maynard, it's a little pitch here. They're going to the right. Roderick Maynard comes up and forces the play real well and makes a good tackle. Justin Ray also was in on that tackle. And Roland Jackson was sort of shedding some blockers aside. So a great effort there. Third down, still about seven for Alabama, deep in Alabama territory. And Bergdorf goes down. He fumbled the ball. He's going to be down to the one. Clay Jennings comes in to get him at the one-yard line. And Alabama is frustrated here in the first quarter. Well, what happens is he it's a bad snap. He just tries to pull away too soon, and he loses the ball, and he has to do everything to, to regain the ball, and he loses his balance, and uh, it's on the one-and-a-half-yard line is what it amounts to. You talk about grandfathers. You know whose grandfather is? Whitlow Wyatt. Well, the pitcher, the great pitcher from the Brooklyn Dodgers. And pitching coach of the Braves. I knew him well when he was coaching. Snap from center. They could almost get a flag out of the movement up there in the line of scrimmage. Brian Smith is back to take the punt at midfield. Smith gets ankle tackled but goes to the 40-yard line in Alabama territory, and that's where UNT will take over. Tracy High, number eight, just got a hold of his foot and pulled him down. Merle, we have to be careful. Stockton was a high school quarterback. So when you see number 18 back there punting and he's a high school quarterback, you always have to think of one thing. Is this another Danny White play? Oh, yeah. Where they pass out of that uh, punt formation. That kick was for 47 yards in a return of eight by Brian Smith. UNT's ball on the Alabama 40. Josh Gully is back in at quarterback now. Gully pumps once. He's under a rush. He's got to get going. He, he may get. He's got to get a flag for grounding the ball. You got to eat that ball when you're in a situation like that. Right. Kendrick Burton had the pursuit. Well, like we've said, that this defensive line is very, very good. They they just uh, they come around the corner and and what happens is the tight end doesn't block anybody. <laughs> you can't. You can't play this game if you don't block somebody, I'll tell you that. It's hard to find fault with Brian Walters, but uh, Brian Walters was the, was the reason that that play block that broke down. By the way, that penalty also includes a loss of down. The ball has moved back to the 42-yard line in UNT territory where it becomes second and... Let me see, Eagle Eye, Hank Dickinson, uh, 15, 16, 17, and 17. Seven, 17 and a quarter yards to go. Way to go, Hank. Second down and 17 at the 42. Gully again to throw. Swings it out to Bo Harrison. Harrison gets trapped on the sideline, is out of bounds at about the 42, which I think is a line of scrimmage. Ozell Powell chased him out of bounds, so if he gained any ground at all, he may have gotten a foot. This is just a little swing pass here is what it is. He just swings the ball out here to Harrison, and, and here's a big, big defensive tackle. Number 78 comes over there and makes the play. That's Ozell Powell who made that play. And that when you've got people that can run that are 6'5", 318, it's hard to block them. <laughs> Matt Simon has selected his third down and 20... Seven or 17. Fumble recovered by Gully at the 35. So UNT had a great opportunity when they had a, a fourth down on the one-yard line situation for Alabama, but a great punt got them out of some trouble, and then they start going backwards. What happens is Gully just tries to pull out too fast here. You know, that rush is, is so tough that he's just trying to get away faster, and all of a sudden he gets away too fast and, and fumbles the ball and almost lost it because he couldn't find it. Alabama's going for the block. There's only one man back, so they're coming after Brian Smith. Now they drop two men off just about three or four yards. Fourth down, 34 yards to go. Partially blocked. The ball takes a roll for UNT, however. Goes down across the 35, down to the 37. So the 
They had a fourth and 34 and didn't get the 34. Brad Ford, number 11, gets a hand on the ball. Look. They just come right up the middle here, and there's just too many men to block is what it amounts to. Now we've come to the end of the first quarter. It was a 32-yard punt under the circumstances. Not bad. There's no score here in Tuscaloosa, and we'll return to Bryant-Denny Stadium in a moment. No score here. You know, Gil, uh, the Alabama defense has... You know, has really shown what he can do today. But it was the Alabama defense that got nine points against uh, Ole Miss last week, which got Alabama back in the win column after that devastating loss to Tennessee. And they had a minus eight yards in the first quarter doing it. Yep. 33-yard line for Alabama. Hutt Kitchens is now the quarterback, and he hands off to Dennis Riddle. And he doesn't go anywhere. He gets maybe a yard. Second and nine, Brett Renfro, 43, and they're on the tackle. Well, as I said, I wouldn't be a bit surprised to see him change quarterbacks. And and, and if uh, if Kitchens doesn't get something done, as I said, I think they will go to Warren Faust, and, and who's a great player. He was a uh, high school, he was the best player in the state of Oklahoma two years ago. But Kitchens, uh, Kitchens, in his senior year in high school, uh, was involved in a 69 to 63 game. Riddle on the carry. That's Duke Lamb that made the play there. And you know, one thing, Duke Lamb is not from Fort Worth. He is from Irving MacArthur. And let, and let me tell you something about Duke Lamb. He is a non-scholarship player here right now. Look at this play here. All Duke wants to do is play. play. You know what Duke does on Sunday? He has a year-old daughter, and he goes home to, to Irving and changes diapers on Sunday. <laughs> Third down, 11. We'll see more of Duke Lamb today, I'm sure of that. Shotgun. Kitchen. Great arm. Throws. Not enough for first down, however, to Josh Niblett, the tight end. Roderick Maynard on the tackle. And I'll tell you what, Freddie Kitchens was under some pressure there, too. What the hell is, they're in a shotgun here. And again, Duke Lamb almost makes the play, and, and he throws it out to the tight end, the safety valve, as they call it. And, and it's completed, but not enough for a first down. Another good defensive series. I guess that what's, what this is, we're just 21 points better this week than we were last week in the first quarter. Outstanding effort right now by the Eagles. Fourth down six. Hayden Stockton is back there to it is. throwing up the punt, and he grabs the ball right open. That is a crusher for Jimmy Jeremy Pruitt. Let me double check that. It might it might have been short. Number 23, and he just simply dropped the ball. That was Andre Short. They had the receiver open. Gill called the shot. He knew it was in the in the playbook, and it didn't work because the guy just didn't hold a wide open. Well, he was wide open. <laughs> you know, one of the things you do is look to see what punters were high school quarterbacks. And we talked about it in the Missouri game. Their their punter was a high school quarterback. So you always look for that play. UNT has the ball <laughs> as we take one more look. Hit UNT. him in a bad place right in the hands. UNT on the 36-yard line of Alabama. Now the Alabama defense really has to go to work. Josh throwing on the run. Has the man open. And it's a knock to the bounds of the one-yard line. Corlin Grimes. Merle, you're going to see the tight end make a great block here. What happens is Brian Waters goes in motion one way, comes back, and then makes a great walk. Here you see Waters coming down. And you don't, I guess you don't see him, but, but he reverse pivots and rolls out there and hits Grimes for a big play. This Grimes is going to be a very, very good player for this team. Got great speed. A 35-yard pickup on a pass and run to the one-yard line of Alabama. And now the Alabama defense will really be tested. It's been tough. It's a full house backfield. Up Get over him. the stack goes Waters. Not quite. At the one foot line. So if Waters, the tight end, lined up in the backfield. And Jason Mills handed off to him. What, what happens? It's a full house backfield. And they give it to the second man through is what they do. Jennings, the lead blocker. The, the tight end, uh, Brian Waters, is, is the second man through. And he gained about a half yard, but he almost fumbled the ball. That's the unfortunate part, or the lucky part, we should say, that he didn't fumble it. Jennings. Quarterback is... sneak right now. Here is the roll. A touchdown. 
Jason Mills rolling to the right, walking in unmolested. Well, they ran the option right there for a touchdown. You know, it's amazing. You can hear these people in the background booing. <laughs> but it, the running the option down on the goal line is a very, very good play, and it uh, it, it shows you that uh, uh, they're a well-coached team here is what it amounts to. So 12-13 to go in the first half. Robbie Hoffman in for the extra point try. He's had 10 out of 12 this year. Brian Smith the hold. The kick is on the way. And it is good. It is 7-0 UNT over Alabama. So the Eagles are acquitting themselves very well today in Tuscaloosa. And a shocked crowd looks on. It is 7-0 UNT. What it is here is they just run an option play. They try to freeze everybody. And the, and the lead blocker obviously comes back there. I think it's uh, Walters who makes the block there uh, and takes him in for a touchdown. You know, there's two plays that you can run uh, on the goal line that are very successful plays. One's what they call a play pass, where the quarterback will roll out and try to hit the tight end. And the second is the option that they just ran there. Three plays, 36 yards, 50 seconds. Seven to nothing, UNT. Michael Fagan and Marcel West are deep for Alabama for the kickoff by Toby Gowen. West, got to keep that ball away from West. Marcel can fly. Gowen sends it high. Back into the end zone. It'll be run out from two yards deep by West. West at the 10, West at the 15. This guy can really go, as we mentioned. He gets the ball out across the 25, and they'll spot it somewhere around the 26 or 27. Now let's go to the first quarter GTE statistics. Gil? Well, it, what happens here is, is Alabama controls the ball. <laughs> this is really impressive. Uh, nine total yards by the Eagles and, and 13 total yards by Alabama. This is like a snowstorm game or a rain game. 22 yards total offense in the first quarter. That's unbelievable. You know, if, Gil, if we've been playing yesterday, this would be the format because it was pouring here yesterday. That's right. West, a 26-yard return. Here's a pitch coming back to the fullback, Steger, and Steger is out to the 29, the, the tailback. You know, Alabama looks like we did when we played Alabama-Birmingham. They just don't look very sharp at all. You see the quarterback almost uh, almost misses, misses a pitch here. He fakes it to the first back through and then hits his arms and then pitches it back to Steger, and Steger picks up about three or four yards on the play. Coleman showed him, uh, slowed him up, and then several more white shirts came into the kill. Second down, seven after a gain of three. Chad Key, who is a real flyer, is wide to the right side, and Marcel West, who can pick it up and lay him down, is to the left for Alabama. This is West. West gets a first down across the 25 to about the 37. Calvin Davis, number 37, makes the tackle, and the crowd. You know, this is what you call a quick screen out here. The quarterback throws a quick screen out here to the flyer west, and the guard and tackle come out there. The number 63 doesn't block anybody, but if he blocks somebody, they got a pretty good play going for him. Marcel West from Niceville, Florida. He was a high school quarterback, and he's run a 10-500 meters is what he has. Great name for a town, isn't it? Niceville. Freddie Kitchens, the quarterback. This is Steger, the tailback. And he gets tripped up at about the 43 and bounces to the 45. Lorenzo Washington, 39, made the hit. And again, they run that slant this time to the right side, and that's reminiscent of a week ago. That's a favorite play. They line up in the eye formation, and he fakes to the fullback, and then they just break it right or left. This time they go right, and it's, a, it's about a 10-yard gain on the play is what it amounts to. Washington makes a great play. Otherwise, you may have a touchdown on that play. We Second met Steger yesterday in uh, in Coach Stallings' office. I, I think he uh, got the word from Coach Stallings yesterday about playing hard today. Second and three, Steger again on the run. Trying to go to the outside. He gets the first down, breaks the tackle. Down the sideline, cuts back, still on his feet. May go all the way, but he goes down at about the 16. 
Merrill, this is just a little sweep play, and there's a missed tackle here, is what happens. A little sweep right, and, and, and all of a sudden it's a 40-yard gain. Willis, uh, Willis Hudson had to make the tackle, and Steger, and we watched him in film of the Tennessee and Arkansas well, game. This guy looks like a cover. It really is a student body right. They've got that, that extra tight end in there to block, and they miss, a, they miss a tackle. Number 37 misses a tackle, and all of a sudden it's a, it's a big play is what it amounts to. Calvin Davis just missed the tackle on that play. Wide outs to each side. Here comes the pitch again, Steger. One more time, Steger inside the 10. Oh, the, ball. Ball. the play may have been over, however. No, it wasn't. UNT recovered. Brett Renfro and Willis Hudson were in on the play defensively, and Hudson comes up with the ball. Uh, again, that was a very, very alert play. You know, the Eagles are really playing alert today. And, we, and when you play alert, you make things happen. And, and that's, what, that's what's happening today. There's a there's a group of players that are playing very hard out there. Steger just loses his balance, and the ball comes out, and, and his knee was not down. His hand was down. His left hand was down. If his knee would have been on the ground, it wouldn't have counted. The fact that his hand was on the ground, that makes it uh, the fumble and the ball live. Renfro was a guy that really made that play. On he makes top. a lot of plays. Gully is now the quarterback. First down on the eight-yard line of UNT. Gully, quarterback draw. Gets a little bit of room across the 10 to about the 12. <laughs> Gully, the ball carrier. So the Eagles have a short gain on the play to make it second down about six. Dwayne Rudd, 87, the weak side linebacker, who's an outstanding. In fact, he leads the Crimson Tide in tackles with 62. Well, they have two players that are starting on this team from Batesville, Mississippi. And he's one of the two. Troy Redwine is wide to the right on second down. Harrison to the 15. Kendrick Burton, 94, of Alabama, stops the play. He's a defensive end. But it, it, here's just a handoff to the, front, to the running back, the remaining back. And, and we talked to Harrison yesterday. The one thing he has to do is really break the ball up in there. But Bo Harrison is a, is a hard trying back, and, and he's performed very well this year under these circumstances. Third down, three. Gully under the chase throws. It's intercepted. It's going to be a touchdown for Alabama. Number 13, Cedric Samuel, with his second interception of the year. And that's just simply an experience. That's, uh, that's just a bad call, a bad play, I should say. You know, you've got to learn to eat the ball. Don't turn it into two people like that, because something bad's going to happen to you. Here's another Alabama touchdown on defense, is what it amounts to. Return it, return it 12 yards is what he did. He, he, you know, he should have just taken the sack right there on the five-yard line is what he should have done. And, uh, but no, he tries to throw the ball, and Samuels intercepts it and runs it into a touchdown. Again, it was great pass rush, though. 8-19 to go in the first half. Alabama has tied the score at 7 on Michael Proctor's one jillionth consecutive extra point. That's 121, really. So a timeout, score tied at 7, 8-19 to go in the first half. Alabama 7, UNT 7. Let's go down to Ed Budinero. Thank you very much, bro. On that last play, Coach Simon brought Gully, uh, Josh Gully over and explained to him or looked at him and said, was that a good pass? Was it or was it a bad pass? Gully said, yes, it was indeed a bad pass. But then the coach went on to teach him what he should have been doing. He said he should have taken a sack. Sack wouldn't have hurt him at that point, but the interception would. Merle Gill, back up to you. Okay, Ed, good report. Curtis McKitty and Brian Smith will be back for William Watts' kick. Watts, who has a very strong leg, sends it down to Smith on the seven. Smith out across the 15, gets to the 20. And it'll be first and 10 for UNT at the Eagle 20-yard line. Wilson Watts. Uh, they don't play the wild thing though when he comes in. Well, he's got a he's got a very very strong leg and and, and and he gets great hang time is what he does on those kickoffs. And they're very hard to run about. They're back to the 20 yard line, which is just about as good as you can expect on a situation like that. First and ten for the Eagles at their own 20. The Eagles scored first in this game today. 
Josh Gully is the quarterback. He's right back in there. Mills scored on a half yard run to put UNT ahead, and Alabama ties it on the pass interception. Up and up the middle. Harrison stopped at the 19. 99. Darryl, uh, rather Darryl Blackburn, 44, and Curley, 99. Curly, Curley's a sophomore here, and he reminds you a great deal of Warren Sapp, who played so well at Miami last year. He's out with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He's so strong and quick, he just explodes off the ball and, and is almost uh, is there before the handoff. Very, very good play. He's a sophomore from Birmingham, Alabama. He's a little guy. He weighs 290. Only 6 1 now. <laughs> Waters in motion to the left side. Sets. Gully under a rush. Throws. And it's incomplete at the 25 yard line. Merle, this is all pass rush by four defensive linemen. I, I don't think they blitz today at all. And, and it's just strictly a pass rush. They just tee off, and uh, and, and Gully doesn't have a chance. It's uh, number 99, Kersey again, that uh, almost makes the play. And then Rudd, uh, the linebacker, uh, comes in there and, uh, and, and kind of finishes him off, so to speak. Gully took a beating on that play, too, I'll tell you that. Threw the ball behind the receiver. McKinney, and he just had no chance with it. No. Third down and ten. Gully to throw again. Gully to Smith, and Brian makes the catch, fights at the 35 to the 36, and gets a first down. Kevin Jackson, number seven, the strong safety, is the primary tackler, and here comes Brian Smith and all that toughness again. I'll tell you this, I don't know how you can catch a ball any better than that. If I were going to war, the one guy I'd want on my team would be Brian Smith. You know, and Gully, give him credit, he throws that ball in there very good because he's under heavy pressure. 16-yard pickup. Great play. First down, UNT. Gully looks to throw again. Swings it out to Harrison at the 40. Harrison to the 43. Fernando Bryant, number 25, from Murfreesboro, Tennessee. The freshman makes the tackle. You know, you know, Merle, if that ball would have been thrown a little bit higher, you're going to see it here. It's throwing low, and he has to kind of reach down to stop to get it. If not, they've got a great play going here. They're going to have a 15 or 20-yard play. But what happens is it's throwing down, and it gives the defense the time to get over there. Harrison's done a very good job today. He's played very, very well. Second down, three and a half. Everybody out now. We're in motion. Harrison, nothing. Harrison's in motion here. What happens is he just goes across the line and turns up too fast. So Cedric Samuel on the tackle. I don't see a flag, though. Yeah, it's there. Uh, it is? Complete. Yeah, there it is. Okay. In the corner. Harrison. They'll refuse it because it's uh, it gives them another down here. Field too quick. Penalty declined. Declined, but declined, but. <laughs> third down. The uh, one of the officials started to walk up the penalty, and the uh, uh, referee Al Ford, you may have heard, said, "Decline, decline, decline." <laughs> Well, Al Ford is, is, a, is a great, great official, uh, and I've got, come to know he and his brother very well. They, his brother lives there in the Dallas area. Now Corlin Grimes goes to the slot left, and wide to the left is Troy Redwine on third down three as they decline the penalty. Should be a flag on that one, but there isn't. That's that zoom route again where they try to run it. The guy's open, but uh, the, the ball is it's not throwing real well. Again, it's a big, heavy rush, and, it, and there's no blitz or anything. It's just a four-man rush is what it is. Ball's well, it looked like... Uh, made a short arm to the middle. Yeah, Deshae Townsend had a piece of red wine, but... Uh, that's why the guys in the black shirts are down there. That's why we're black and white shirts, rather. That's why we're up here. You know, Michael Vaughn, who I believe is back here to receive this punt, is an excellent punt returner. I think in his senior year in high school, he ran six kicks back for touchdowns. Toby Gowen to punt. Sends it downfield. Vaughn at the 20. Vaughn up the sideline, runs out of bounds at the 25. Vaughn receives and goes out of bounds. Our next television game will come from Las Vegas, Nevada. It'll be UNT and the Running Rebels from Las Vegas. It'll be 3 o'clock Central Time on Channel 27 in Dallas at Sam Boyd Stadium in Las Vegas. 
And of course, UNLV and the University of North Texas will be partners for a long time in the Big West Conference starting uh, next year. Great partnership, uh, I'll tell you that. It's a great thing for the University of North Texas Eagles. Freddie Kitchens, a quarterback, first down on the 25-yard line for Alabama. He goes to Brian Steger, and Steger gets near the 30. Well, we finally stopped that play for about a four-yard gain. Is what I'm out to. But there's a little difference with Steger running it and, uh, and the LSU back uh, running it. Stephen Hunt, number 90. What it is, it's just a little uh, uh, outside option is what it is, and, and, and uh, the, the, it's played well. The linebacker comes up, fills the hole, and makes a good play on it. Second down, five. Curtis Brown is wide to the left side. He can fly. So can Marcel West, who is to the right. This is Curtis Brown. On the screen left. And Brown gets the first down to the 39, almost the 40, before Britt Rinfro, number 43, can make the tackle. Curtis Brown can really burn you. He has caught passes for 339 yards coming into the game today and three touchdowns. Well, it's it's a quick screen again is what it, what it is. This is a play that the Dallas Cowboys and Bob Hayes made famous uh, in the early 70s where the, where the the back just steps back and catches the ball. Curtis Brown's uh, cousin uh, played in the National Football League, Charlie Brown, with the Washington Redskins. Game tied at seven. Five minutes left to play in the first half here in Tuscaloosa. Steger. And Steger to the 43. Brian Steger, who Steger has just, uh, as far as I'm concerned, has won the job as a tailback today. Well, he really has. He just kind of spins here and bounces outside and and, and, and makes a uh, loss into a, about a four-yard game. Actually, it was a very, very good block that time by Pete DeMarco, the right tackle, number 72 that enabled that play to gain five yards. Jackson making the tackle. It is now second down six. Score tied at seven, second quarter in Tuscaloosa. Steger again gets hit by the line, breaks the tackle low and bounces out to midfield. He Willis Hudson almost had him there and, and, and uh, just uh, sheer energy or whatever it may be enabled him to break loose for a first down. What it is, is, is Hudson comes across the line. He just can't hang on to him. Hudson made a great play there. What he does is get him right upfield into the path of the runner, and, and if, he'd, uh, if he'd have tackled him, uh, they'd have had a, uh, a loss. Steger has really come on and played well. As I said earlier, Steger was in, uh, in Coach Stallings. We see Coach Stallings there now. He was in Coach Stallings' office yesterday for a little heart-to-heart -heart talk, and I'll tell you what, I know what those heart-to-heart -heart talks are with Pete Stallings. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you want to go up the hill? We have a timeout. 3.56 to go in the first half. Score tied at 7 here in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Merle Harmon and Gil Brent and Ed Budinero with you from Tuscaloosa, Alabama. On the campus, the University of Alabama. Yes, that's the right score, 7-7 seven, seven, with 3.56 to go in the first half. And you know, Gil... Mr. Steger now has 84 yards rushing, and for the year, Alabama is only averaging 107 per game. Right. So they've got more uh, more total offense running the ball today in the, in, in the first two quarters than they've averaged for the entire season. Take to Steger, Kitchens throw long, and a great catch by Chad Key, number 19 on the 26-yard line. Merrill, Chad Key's one of those big, tall, wide receivers. He's about 6'5". He actually walked on here. He was a high school player, a high school quarterback that had a chance to go to Duke and some other place on a scholarship. What you see is, is Chad Key just runs an inside route here is what he does, and he extends and catches the ball. This is what you want to teach a player how to catch. Uh, is that's the way that you get your hands up there and catch in your hands. As I said, Chad was a, was a high school walk on here. Avery Wright made the tackle. Freddie Kitchens moving the Crimson Tide now with a score tied at seven. Kitchen to throw, and it is Andrew Shepard. Roderick Maynard. Maynard picks it off. It was just a question of whether he could hold the ball before he hit the deck, and he held on to it. Well, that was great anticipation that time. What happens is he takes a chance. You know, if he'd have intercepted this ball uh, on a play just like this uh, against Alabama-Birmingham, it would have been an entirely different game. Here he intercepts it, and if he keeps his feet, it's a touchdown. Good, very, very good play by Roderick Maynard. Very, very good football player. He tries very hard. He really shouldn't be a corner. He should be a safety. He just doesn't have the speed to play out there at corner, but he's done an excellent job. Maynard 
playing that corner in the absence of Moji Gibson. First down for UNT at the UNT 20. UNT to the run with Bo Harrison. Not much. Josh Gully, the quarterback now. They've been alternating today. That's uh, Gully and Mills, that is. Matt Parker, number 98, 98 from Lawton, Oklahoma, made the tackle. It'll be second down 10. Well, let, let me tell you, uh, uh, in 1983, to tell you about the Southeastern Conference, I went to the, Alabama, uh, the Auburn, Florida game in 1983, and 56 players that played in that game were active in the National Football League at one time or other. That shows you the strength of this conference. Draw. Nothing fumble. They pile up. And, of course, needless to say, the players on each side are going to say, we got the ball, we got the ball, but I think UNT recovered it. They did. DeAndre Mason. No, Alabama recovered it. I thought I saw an official's hand go up for a UNT recovery, but we'll just have to wait a little longer. Merrill, this is what they have to overcome, these turnovers. You know, a turnover for an interception. It's just a bad handoff here is what it is. Not, he, well, I guess not. I thought it looked like a bad handoff. But he just knocks the ball right out of his hands that time is what happens. Great work by Ozell Powell, Ozell number 78. Ozell Powell's a junior, and he has really been playing well. As I said, he's a six foot five. 320 pound defensive tackle. Steger on the run, trying to go wide, trying to get to the outside. Cut spins and gets some yardage. Boy, Gene Stallings has got to like what he's seeing from this guy today. Well, it's it's again that student body right uh, pitch is what it is that Southern Cal made so famous. Steger, is, I believe, is going out of the game right now. We have two minutes and two seconds to go. Now we have two minutes to go in the first half. The score tied at seven. Kitchens is a fine baseball player. He's a pitcher. Has a very powerful arm. Second down. Seven and a half. Steger again. Steger back. Steger inside the 15 to the 14. So he's coming up close to the 100-yard uh, mark in rushing this afternoon. But he is short of a first down. And it'll be a third, third and five. five. Uh -huh. Merle, uh, Kitchens and Todrick Malone played together in high school. And Sissel. Right. And their senior year in high school, they played in the championship playoff game. 69-63, they lost. How's that for defense? <laughs> How's that for offense? Wow. <laughs> Shotgun formation here now. Brown to the right side. Kitchens looks right, throws left, lifts it high. I can't get it. That's Todrick Mason, number or Charlie, uh, Malone, rather number 80. Todrick Malone. That's what they call a fade route. Is what they do. The wide receiver goes down. He fakes the inside and then takes it to the corner. Is what happens here. Good pass rush there. Sterling Guest was blitzing on the particular play and made him throw the ball probably a little sooner than he wanted to. You'll see Sterling coming up the middle here. He overthrows the ball. Actually, he had Maynard Pete on the play. Fourth down and fourth and five. Field goal attempt by Michael Proctor from the 21, making it a 31-yard field goal. And it is good. Alabama takes the lead. A 31-yard field goal by Proctor. He is now eight of nine this year. Merle. Let me tell you about Proctor. Uh, Kevin Butler, the kicker for the Bears, holds the record, 353 points in the Southeastern Conference, and, and Kevin Butler is within 27 points of breaking that. So between field goals and extra points, he has kicked almost 350, uh, scored almost 350 points uh, for the Crimson Tide. Our next home game at uh, Denton will be November 11th. In fact, it's a final home game against Idaho State at Fouts Field. For tickets, call 1-800-UNT-2366. That's Idaho State, a very good football team. And it's the last home game of the season for the Eagles. And I'll tell you what, it'd be great to have a huge crowd out there because 
If you've watched any of these games on television, you've seen how hard these kids have played against a very tough schedule, and they love it. They love to play Alabama and LSU and Oklahoma. And uh, uh, Merle, let me say this. Uh, the, the fans will be in for a treat because Ed Boutonero's youngster and my youngster is going to be out there, and I guarantee you they'll put a show on for them. What, what, we go down to Ed Jr. for a report. McKinney and Smith are back deep. That's Smith on the one. Smith chug it away, fighting to the 20, and goes down there. You know, it was Andre Short who made the tackle. You know, Smith's father uh, makes all the games. There's a lot of fathers that uh, make the games here. Uh, the Remley family makes the games. Smith family makes the games. Duke Lamb's uh, father makes the games. So there's, there's quite a bit of backing for the players. Smith, Smith is just an amazing player. I, you know, he's undermanned, undersized, under speed, and, and still he makes things happen, just like the great catch he made for a first down uh, in, in the uh, closing minutes of the uh, first quarter here. Quarterback is Josh Gully. 50 seconds to go in the first half. Josh on the draw. And Harrison gets three. It'll be second down seven. You know, the linemen are unheralded because the the glamour position players seem to get uh, all the pictures on television and there's not much you can do about that because they handle the ball. But you look up front and you see Waddle and Lee and Bowles and Gilliland and and Castillo, Gilliland has moved over to the defense, but he's played offense uh, so much this year. And Chad Hinkleman. At least these offensive linemen have played well. They're just out overmatched is what it amounts to. One punt, now down the far side. The ball is caught by Redwine, and Redwine is out of bounds. On the Alabama 44, Kevin Jackson, number seven, the strong safety, chased him out. There's six seconds left in the first half. Merle, you know, you talked about the offensive line, and there's a case where the offensive line did a great job because they have to be able to hold him. He fakes, and then he throws the ball. And what they did is the corner just bit on the play is what happened, and all of a sudden, you got a big play. 32 yards. Deshae Townsend is the player that he beat. Troy Red Redwine has, uh, has played very, very well this year. He's made some big plays. You know, he made the play against Oregon State that won the game. He had three touchdowns in that particular game. And we have a flag on the play. And this Too much flag, time. We had, they had 12 men on the field, and it was uh, Bo Harrison who was trying to get off the field, but they get hit with a five. Merle, do you realize it, it, that, that Alabama has gone to 47 bowl games and the next highest is 37, Southern Cal, and then 35 by Texas and Tennessee. So you see what kind of a program they've got and, and what kind of an atmosphere and team that you're playing here today. And these are all the things that UNT uh, can look for to, as they go on in the years ahead. Six seconds, this pass down the sideline is completed to uh, McKinney, and McKinney is brought down to the 25 as the first half comes to an end. So Curtis McKinney made that catch at the 25-yard line. Kevin Jackson made the tackle and run out of time in the first half. A 25-yard pickup on that pass play. So at halftime, Alabama leads by a score of 10 to 7. It's a great, great half. Uh, what, what, you know, if it wasn't for one interception, bad decision for a touchdown, this very easily could be a 7-0 lead right now. 10-7, that's the right score, Alabama over the University of North Texas as we get ready for the third quarter of play here in Tuscaloosa. Merle Harmon with Gil Brandt, Ed Budanero, and we have some UNT fans here today who are obviously enjoying the proceedings and hoping that uh, UNT can show the same kind of, of uh, strength that they did in the first half and sort of stymieing uh, Alabama. UNT will kick off to start the third quarter. And, Gil, this is going to be a very, very important series coming up for the UNT defense. No question about it. They have to stop them right here. And, and, you know, this has been our Achilles heel the third quarter, but let's hope that we can get a turnover on a kickoff or a turnover quickly in this series and uh, go in and have a chance to score real quickly. Toby Go in a short kick, end over end. It's going to be out of bounds. And we'll, that ball goes, doesn't go very far. It went about 25 yards, and so... Now, they have they, the option of, of, of taking the ball or re-kicking it is uh, what they have, and I think they'll probably take the ball at the 35-yard line is what they'll do. 
So if that ball had gone out of bounds on the 40 yard line then the option would have been keep it there but it went out of bounds somewhere inside the 30 and they pick up seven yards on the uh, the rule which brings it to the 35 and that's where Alabama will take over. The quarterback will be Brian Bergdorf who started the game. 10-7 Alabama. Steger is the running back. Steger the call. Steger across the 40. And gets out to the 41. Brett Renfro, 43, makes the tackle with help from Calvin Davis, number 37. So Steger continues to run well for Alabama, and Gene Stallings may have found that running back. Although he's a north-south. Well, on the second thought, though, Gil, he's had some pretty good moves out there on the corners, even. Yes, he really has. You know, he's kind of a slashing runner that, that, that cuts it back up inside, and, and that's what he's done today. Now Kitchen throwing long, going for the ball, and it's dropped. Todrick Malone had tried to make a one-hand catch, and that was a very good call by Alabama because they were going for the down. Yeah, this is just a fly route is what it is, and they try to beat the corner. It's one-on-one -on -one coverage, and they just try to beat the corner out here, and he's got... Uh, He's got him beat, and, and unfortunately, the ball is just a little bit long, but boy, Malone can make big plays, and, uh, you know, you kind of worry about that. I guess it's uh, it's uh, Roderick Maynor that he beat on that play, isn't it? And Roderick goes. Third down, four. Kitchen trying to pick it up through the air. Down, he throws to Seeger. So Steger, who has been carrying the ball for big yardage, takes the pass and gets the first down on the 48. Justin Ray, 51, the middle linebacker. Next to him for UNT. Merrill, what they've tried to do here is create a mismatch. The linebacker has to cover Steger coming out of the backfield. And it's very hard for that middle linebacker to run, who usually are 4, 8, 4, 9 players. We're going to see Steger come out of the backfield. He checks up to look for a blitz, and he just comes out of the backfield and, and beats uh, beats the middle linebacker there on, on that particular play is uh, what he did. Justin Ray just couldn't uh, keep up with him. Alabama goes to the run with uh, Steger, and Scott Murphy starts the play, uh, stops the play, rather, after a gain of two yards. Now Alabama will make a bunch of switches as Gene Stallings continues his rotation. His rotation on the defensive line, as Gill has pointed out, is, a, is very good. I mean, there's some real talent there. Well, there's about eight players that get up there and play, and they're all pretty good is what it amounts to. Wide outs to each side, a single running back. Fake to Steger, a screen to the wide out Brown, and Brown slips by a would-be tackle, goes down the sideline, and finally out of bounds to the 23. That's that quick screen again is what it is, and uh, they just throw it over here, and he makes a move to the inside and, and just about breaks it for a touchdown. Here you see a fake handoff. They call it a fire pass, but it's a quick screen. He catches the ball behind the line, and the lineman released downfield, and all of a sudden, big number 77, the offensive tackle, uh, the offensive left tackle, Joe Holliday, uh, just gets in the way of about three people, and Brown makes a good play. Gain of 24 yards. This time they go to the up back, and that's six. Sism. And Sism, who is a rover tight end, is how he is described by Gene Stalling. Stopped by Justin Ray after he gets about six. Well, Sism got his one or two carries per uh, game. What they do here is they just give it to the first man through, and, and Justin Ray makes the play. Uh, but unfortunately, instead of making the play in the hole, he makes it about five or six yards downfield. If you're a middle linebacker, you've got to make that play right in the hole. Bergdorf up under. But Steger again. And Steger does not get the first down this time. He is brought down on the 15-yard line. And once again, Justin Ray is the lead tackle. Lorenzo Washington made the tackle. Lorenzo Washington from the secondary and also Scott Murphy in the territory. It's a little slant play is what it is. It's just a, a, a slant play off the left side. And, uh, again, what they try to do is slant it and then break it up in there. And, and the hole is plugged pretty good. So it's a big play coming up here. Chad Key is in the lineup as a wide out. Here comes Steger again. And Steger trying to get that first down, but he doesn't make it. He's brought down to 13. It looks like he's going to be a half yard or two yard short. Justin Ray once more. I don't know what play. I don't know what Coleman's all upset about there, but you don't want to get a penalty in this situation here. You know, speaking of penalties, Alabama's averaged 10 penalties a game this year, and so far, I believe none today. 
Well, you know, they all came uh, three weeks after the Arkansas game uh, where Arkansas had 12 men on the field when they scored a touchdown and it wasn't called. Fourth down one. Bama will go for it. Steger slips, goes down, turns the ball over. First down for the Eagles. They held him. You see Coleman in there. You see Lorenzo Washington. Renfro, Renfro's on the bottom, number 43. You know, what, what happens here? I, I don't think they would have made it even if Steger wouldn't have slipped. Steger, it, it's the second man through. Well, I, I guess it's not, it wasn't a slip. It was a fumble, wasn't it? And it looks like Renfro recovered the fumble. Again, it was a bad handoff, and uh, Renfro recovers the fumble. Here it is. Again, it's a, it's a fumble. Steger just doesn't get the handoff, and Renfro recovers it. I thought it was a slip. I did, too. UNT's ball. They go to the run. Harrison thrown for a loss. Harrison running it for Josh Kelly at quarterback. Now Fernando Bryant, 25, the cornerback. Stopped the play for Alabama. Loss of two, second down, 12. You know, Merle, I'm going to recommend on that Southwest Airline flight home that all those defensive players get two dinners instead of one for the job they've done today. Hey, when are we going to get Herb Keller on the flight? Huh? <laughs> We'll, we'll get Kelleher on here. We'll get, his, uh, we'll get his uh, striped jersey here and make some calls. Second down, 12. Waters in motion. Sets tight end right. Here's a blitz. Incomplete. Waters, the receiver. That was one of the few blitzes today. State came from the outside that time and, and blitzed, and uh, he just threw the ball too soon. So Waters was the target. It's third down, 12. You see Gene Stallings here. He doesn't look too happy. Of course, I've known Gene a long time, and I'm not sure he's ever happy unless you're winning about 50 to nothing. <laughs> you know, talking about penalties. Last week, Alabama was penalized 15 times against Ole Miss. Third down, 12. Gully, look out, screen to the left. And, and Not Staten, nearly enough. Staten played it well. A strong side linebacker, Staten, who on the previous play had kind of disrupted things, uh, really played it well. They tried to fake and, and come back and throw it to the strong side, and Staten didn't take the fake and uh, made the play. You'll see a kind of a double pump here is what it is. He looks looks right and then throws it left over there, and as I say, Staten makes the play, and and, and Bruton uh, just comes through and knocks the quarterback down. And Bo Harrison's thrown out of bounds to end the play. It's fourth down eight. Michael Vaughn is back deep for Gowen's punt, and they've got everybody on the line in scrimmage except the deep back. Got to hurry. Gowen drives it downfield. This is a beauty. It'll be fielded on the 30-yard line. A little juke here and a little juke there. And Duke Lamb knocks Michael Vaughn off his feet at the 40-yard line. And we'll be back right after this. Merle Harmon with Gil Brandt and Ed Budanero in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Alabama's ball faked to the running back. Kitchens fires away and it's caught by Malone. And Malone is tossed out of bounds in Eagle territory by Avery Wright. But not until... He picks up a big first down at about the 43-yard line of UNT. That last punt, by the way, by going traveled 52 yards. But it, this is, a, again, a fire pass out of the I formation. What, what's happened is, in both of the previous times that they've started the series, they've started it in a passing situation on first down. So I think when you see that, you look for a pass because that's the pattern that they're going to run in the, in, the, uh, in the second half here. Riddle is now the running back, and he takes the hand up and goes to about the 41. Duke Lamb again making the tackle. Oh, he has been all over the place. That last, that big pickup is 17 yards. Now, Roland Jackson comes limping off the field, and he is replaced by Sterling Guest, number five in a linebacker spot for UNT. 56 there is Willis Hudson. Second down eight. Riddle the tailback. It's a blitz. Kitchen stays on his feet. 
Ankle tackle missed, and he gets to the 36. Stephen Hunt, number nine, finally got him down. They had him for a loss. Renfro putting on the pressure, but Kitchen got out of it, and he gets down to the 36-yard line. It'll be third and about three. Merle, Stephen Hunt is a freshman, and he has really played well. Uh, you know, he came alive in the LSU game, and he has played exceptional football this year. A very, very good young player. You've got to get some weight in, the, in his tail end a little bit, but he's going to be a good player. Malone and Key are wide to the right side, and Brown to the left side for Alabama. Third down three. Kitchen swings it, caught by Key. Key at first down. Chased down to Lorenzo Washington at the 31. Chad Key, a senior from Parrish, Alabama, former quarterback. What, what you see here is it's it's a it, it, they got both wide receivers to one side of the field and they kind of run off the sa the free safety uh, who's trying to cover them out there and they throw to the in close man key is what it is. <laughs> it's almost a pick <laughs> that uh, that uh, people are starting to do. Uh, they, they try to get in the way of the defensive back uh, to cause his uh, sight vision to be obscured. If they can a little pitch. Play doesn't get a whole lot, but he gets something. And it was Sissom. He took that ball down to the 26-yard line. Ed Sissom, who is a rover tied in, up back, if you will. Well, what, what this is here is it's a fake, uh, and all the, it's, it's like the old Harry Gilmer jump pass is what it is. But what they try to do, they try to get flow going right. And, and all of a sudden, the fullback just slips out there and, and catches the ball. And it's a very, very good play by Roderick Maynard. I believe he stayed at home and made the play. Second down six. They're in the eye. Kitchens swings it out here to Brown. And Brown gets inside the 20. About the 23, near the 22. I don't believe he has a first down. Willis Hudson, 56. They're going to wear that play out today. Well, they keep trying it, don't they? They sure do. Gene's going to make them do it until they get it right, huh? Well, you know what's going to happen. They're going to try it, and all of a sudden, they're going to fake that play and, and, and throw it deep and try to catch him uh, uh, for a touchdown is, is what it'll be. You'll see a double pump fake, and he'll fake it out there, and, and all of a sudden, he'll break downfield, and they'll try to hit him on a fly route. Chad Key They is won't back do it in this situation here, I don't think. Riddle is the running back, but instead, it goes to the halfback. Well, it is Riddle. And Riddle is at the 20, and that should be a first down. Sterling Guest made a good play right there in the hole. Sissom was the lead guy. First down on the UNT 20. Alabama leading 10 to 7 with 7 minutes and 45 seconds to go in the third quarter. Sterling Guest came up to me in the hotel lobby last night. He said, I don't want you to talk about me as a swimmer anymore. I'm a football player. <laughs> so we're going to talk to you about it as a football player. Sterling having a fine year. Riddle is the tailback. Here's Kitchen throwing in the run. It is caught almost. Could have been intercepted as, uh, let me see, that was Calvin Davis, 37, who had the coverage on the play. Patrick Hape is a big tight end that they tried to hit on that particular play. It's what, what happens is the rover comes out of the backfield. They pull the off guard, and he rolls right, and the rover comes out of the backfield. He's a big, tall young man that, that was playing, that was their starting tight end last year, started 10 of the 11 games, and it was just a little bit high and a little bit behind him. It's second down. Chad Key, split wide to the right side. In motion, Malone, and the handoff goes to Riddle, and Riddle is inside the 20, down near the 15, where it will be a third, third five. down. Burkdorf at quarterback. Sterling Guest on the last tackle. Here's where you don't want to give him a fourth down because uh, Proctor is just about automatic there. You know, he doesn't ever miss. So if you can stop him right here on this third and sixth situation and, and, and get a turnover, that's all you can ask for. Defense has played absolutely great. Brad Spinks has come in on the line now for UNT. Number 94. Riddle the tailback. Timeout called by Kitchen. Kitchen took a look over there. He either didn't have the right personnel or he didn't recognize the defense. That's Bergdorf, the quarterback now. Is what it is. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, Bergdorf. Okay, we've got a timeout. 6.25 to go in the third quarter. 10-7 Alabama. 
Alabama leads North Texas 10-7. There's the time, 6.25 to go in the third quarter. Now let's take a look at other scores brought to you by Dr. Pepper. And there's some real shockers out there today. Ohio State ran up 56 points in the first half to win 56-35. Mercy, Tennessee, 56 points after scoring 41 against uh, Alabama. And Kansas State really nailed number six Kansas undefeated. But how about this one? Everybody's wondering, how about Northwestern? They came from behind to win 17-14 over Illinois. Third down. Champagne. At Champagne. Blitz showing. And Bergdorf to throw. Fires it away. Incomplete. The intended receiver was Brown. They asked pass. for a flag, and I think they got it. Call pass interference. Avery Wright had the coverage. You know, I, I, we don't have to see this on the replay, but well, I tell you, it looks to me like he was playing the ball here. And if you're playing the ball and playing through the receiver, then it is not pass interference. So on the other it's side reverse of the angle field is what it is. Defensive pass interference. First down at the spot of the foul. Well, it's awful hard to tell on there, to be honest with you. But in looking at it from up here, it looked like uh, they were playing the ball, not the, not, and didn't get there early either. It'll be first and goal to go at about the eight-yard line for Alabama. Bergdorf, touchdown to Sisson. Well. Sisson gets his first touchdown rushing of the year. He caught a pass for a touchdown. But get a load of this, and we've explained his role. Going into this game, he had carried eight times for 25 yards and is a starter, but he's a blocker. He is the Daryl Johnson. Merle, the worst season. thing about this situation is I think the Eagles had the ball for three plays on the first down. What they do here is just give it to the first man through. And I guess you don't expect him to carry the ball, and he just breaks it up in there for a touchdown. Good run by Sissom here. He, he, he breaks it back to the inside and, and scores. Seven-yard touchdown run. Extra point added by Michael Proctor. And Alabama goes ahead 17-7 to with six minutes and 16 seconds to go in the third quarter. Here, here uh, again, the first man through it, they just, uh, I, I don't know what happened to the middle linebacker on that play. If he was blocked or what, I guess he was blocked. Uh, yes, he's blocked out of the play. Justin Ray is just blocked to the ground. And they just go through the hole where Justin Ray is supposed to make the tackle. But you know, the defense can hold up just so long. Our next television game will be next Saturday in Las Vegas, Nevada, where UNT will play UNLV, the running Rebels. At Game will be at 3 o'clock Central Time, Dallas time on Channel 27. Game from Sam Boyd Stadium in Las Vegas. Hope you'll join us. And remember, UNT and UNLV will be playing in the same conference next year, the Big West. So we look forward to that one. Merle, I'd like to say something about the Dr. Pepper people. You know, you just gave the Dr. Pepper scoreboard. And I think in Jim Ball and Jim Turner, the Dr. Pepper people, they are great for the community. They do so many things for the city of Dallas and for the Eagles. And let's hope that they'll be a sponsor of ours for a long time to come. They do a great job. Watts kicks it off for Alabama. Line drive shot that's going to go out of bounds. And UNT will take the ball, no doubt, out to the 35-yard line. That's the smart thing to do. Because I'll tell you what, if he kicks it off again, you'll probably get the ball in the 25. So you made 10 yards on this exchange. Watson just uh, Watts just comes up there and, and kicks it bad. It just kind of line drives it off the side of his foot. Alabama coming into the game today was five and two and three and two in SEC play. Alabama has won over Vanderbilt, Southern Miss, lost to Arkansas, beat Georgia, beat North Carolina State, lost to Tennessee, beat Ole Miss, and next week we'll play LSU right here. Here comes a big rush put on. And it's successful. Well, Gully learned something. He didn't try to throw the ball. This is, a, this is about the second time they've blitzed today, or third time they've blitzed today. And, you know, we've watched the, the, the tapes of the previous game, and they look like they're going to do it all the time, and they usually fake it. But in this particular incident, they, they did blitz, and, and they got Gully, but at least he held on to the ball and didn't make a foolish play. Second He's learning. Down. <laughs> Second down and 20. Yeah, I'm sure that that was reviewed at halftime. In fact, it was reviewed on the sideline after that took place back in the first half. Well, Matt's a very good teacher, I'll tell you that. Second and 20 for Gully. Screen. Harrison brought down from behind, but he gets out to the 33, Van Bowden. 
97. We got it from behind. You know, we talked about Van Bowden earlier in the game. Van Bowden was a player that's not a starter, and last year comes in. He, he, what, what it is, it's just great effort by 97. Van Bowden, he makes the, he, he sees the screen and makes the play and uh, and, and stops a big play, because I'll tell you, that one could have been all the way. Third down, 11 after a nine-yard pickup. Grimes goes wide to the left side. throws the ball, completes it at the 37 to Bo Harrison, but not enough for a first down. Let's go to Ed Bodenero on the sideline. Thank you very much, Merrill. Roland Jackson, a fine linebacker for the University of North Texas, already had a sprained right knee. Now he went and sprained his left knee, and Gil, as you know, sometimes you will compensate if you've got an injury uh, from one knee to another. Merrill, Gil, back up to you. You know, remember we were talking to Bill Michaels yesterday on the plane coming over. He said, this Jackson's one of the toughest kids I've ever been around. He, he broke a hand uh, one hand in the, uh, early in the season last year, had some screws put in it. First game, broke the other hand, and still continued to play. Well, this team is toughness personified, I'll tell you that. They just, uh, these players just go all out, and, and, you know, they're fighting an uphill battle right now, but in years to come, this is going to be a lot different situation. Beautiful putt by Goen, driving, and a fumble, but a quick recovery by Michael Vaughn. Good coverage by Jacory DeMart. So Alabama has the ball and a 17-7 lead in the third quarter. After a 53-yard punt, Alabama leading 17-7, 4-36. UNT Cross Country will host the Southland Conference Championship Monday, October 30th at Eagle Point. Men's coach uh, Ken Garland and Shaq LaProd coaches the women's team. It'll be Monday the 30th, first and 10, Alabama, on the 13-yard line of Alabama. And Riddle cuts up the middle, and he's on the way for a big gainer. Keeping his feet, going across the 45 to the 49-yard line for the best run of the day for Alabama. And Roderick Maynard, 27, and Avery Wright had to pull him down from behind. So UNT got a tremendous 53-yard kick to put Alabama back in the 13, and that's what they came back with. Well, what it is, a little misdirection play is what it is. And and, and it's it's a 37-yard run that gets them out of the hole is what it does here. He, 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 Riddle has, has had a lot of bench time, so I guess he's fresh and realizes he better do something to... Uh... Bergdorf going for the touchdown, and it's Malone on the receiving end, and Alabama has scored again. Well, Merle, you cannot put the pressure on the defense. I think the defense has had the ball, had the, uh, has been off the field for six plays in the, in the third quarter. That's very tough. So Bergdorf... Connects with Malone on a 50-yarder. What, what you're going to see here is is uh, just a blown coverage again, and, and and the safety just doesn't get over there fast enough to make the play, and and when that happens, uh, you got big time trouble. Michael Proctor for the extra point try. He seldom misses. Fast, he's, in fact, he's missed once in his career, and he did not miss this time either. Merrill, what happened on that play is that Calvin Davis, number 37, is a free safety, and he's just got to get over there to make that play. And, and uh, you know, I don't know if he, he, he missed it or he's just not fast enough or whatever it is. It's a, what it is, it's what they call a fire pass, play pass. And and he probably cheated up a little bit, uh, Davis, and all of a sudden it's uh, it, it's Katie by the door. And uh, Malone, who's a, a great big play receiver, is out there, and it's a 50-yard touchdown pass. So all of a sudden, a 10-7 a game becomes a 24-7 uh, game. You know, Bergdorf, uh, as I said earlier, uh, was brought into the Gator Bowl game against North Carolina, a very good North Carolina team two years ago, and he was voted the most outstanding player in the game. So it shows you what kind of depth they have on this football team. That's another wide out Curtis Brown on the sideline, and a good one he compares with Malone. The Eagles' final home game, Saturday, November 11th, against Idaho State. Here at Fouts Field in Denton, for tickets, call 1-800-UNT-2366. Bergdorf, 8 out of 10, 120 yards. Smith on the return. Breaking a tackle, breaking another tackle, getting across the 30, going to the 33. 
Brian Smith finally pulled down by Chris Edwards, number 59 for yes, Alabama. Sir, sir. Merle, let me tell you a little bit about the history of this Alabama program. They've had 44 books written about this program here at Alabama. And, and in 1964 and 1965, they were back-to-back -back national champions. And in 1966, they were 11-0 and, and didn't win the national championship. Great 30-yard return there, and UNT puts the ball in play. hit put on after about a three yard pickup. Brian Smith took it and then took a well, shot as Josh Gully went their pass in there. Well, what they're trying to do is, is throw quick passes. They just don't have the time to set up and throw the ball deep like they would like to because of this great pass rush that the University of Alabama is, is showing out here today. Second down. Six. Mike Boone is now in for UNT. Gully, Boone. Oh, great tackle out there. A fine tackle by Fernando Davis, number 55, a middle linebacker. Well, when you have people that can run, then you can make big plays. And and here it is. They, they're covering the back out here with a middle linebacker, one on one, and he and he just makes an excellent play out here. He just uh, reads the play, comes out and makes the play. If he doesn't make the tackle, it's a big play. It's a 20, 25 yard play, is what it amounts to. Third down, six. <laughs> Showing blitz. Here they come. Beat the blitz to Brian Smith, and Smith has the first down at the 45. Kevin Jackson, number seven, the strong Gully safety Gully on the tackle. Tell you, that's a pretty good poise there by Gully. I, I tell you, Gully, in, in the face of a strong rush, and it is a strong rush, he throws that ball. He throws it between two defensive people, and, and again, it's Smith who makes a big play. I tell you, Smith is, uh, is Mr. Something. And Fernando... Davis, number 55, who was blitzing up the middle, nailed Gully, but he got that pass away. Four wideouts, no running backs. Means you got to get rid of that ball in a hurry. Gully throws it over the middle. It's caught at the midfield stripe by Brian Waters, the tight end. He's down to the 49 of Alabama. Merle, Alabama leading at 24-7, a minute 59 to go in the third quarter. Merle, that ball arrived with some velocity, I'll tell you that. You could just watch it up here. He, he really throws that ball. He really sings it in here. He sets real strong and throws that ball, and that, that's very, very important. And this is a young quarterback that's really getting some experience playing against LSU and Alabama, I'll tell you that. Pretty good hit from Brian and Floyd. Pretty good coach right over here, too. Yes, sir. Quarterback draw. 40, 35, 30, 20. Out of bounds at the 20-yard line. Kevin Jackson chasing Josh Gully out of bounds with help from Cedric Samuel. I tell you what, this young man from South Grand Prairie High School, this is a quarterback draw coming up right here. There's such a strong rush, and they just run this quarterback draw, and it's usually a seven or eight yard play. In this particular case, it's a 29 yard run, and old Josh Gully takes off and runs a lot faster than I thought he could. You know, he's got some strength too, hasn't he? Oh, I, I, I tell you, I like this young man. I'm gonna play racquetball if that's legal with him in the off season. It'll be good for both of us. At the 20, first down for UNT. Gully incomplete, and again, the butchers were coming. Troy Redwine was the target. Uh, you know, again, they, they just can't block these people. These Alabama people come in waves is what they do. You know, it's, it's, the, it's the red wave or the green wave, but this is a, the Crimson Tide wave. Here it is, number 78, old Powell just comes through there and really does a, does a job on him here. Second and 10. We have a minute 23 to go in the third quarter. Ozell Powell is only 6'5", 308. <laughs> Second and 10. No running backs. Everybody is out. Gully throws. It is caught inside the 10 First by down. Brian Smith. And it's first and goal to go. Who else but Brian Smith? And who else but Ralph Staten on the tackle? I'll tell you, Brian Smith has given those linebackers fit today. Here he is, set strong again, throws that ball to the inside man on three wide receiver set. 
what this is is a real good game plan, good coaching, because what they're making them do is they're making them cover a wide receiver with a linebacker, and that's pretty tough to do. Same formation right here again. 13-yard pickup, first and goal. 24-7, Alabama. Hand off to Smith. Smith at the five, rolled out of bounds at about the four, maybe the three. On the end of round, and Fernando Bryant, 25, got him out of bounds. What, what they do here is they bring Smith in motion back to the weak side of the formation. And, and what they do is they run that linebacker all the way across the field, and he's got to come across there to make the tackle because everybody else is blocked. And, and, and Staten comes by and makes the tackle, but it's still a, it's still a good play. It's uh, down to the three-yard line. 48 seconds to go in the third quarter. Second and goal. Waters in motion. Throwing touchdown. Brian Waters, and that was a well-conceived play. Well, Merle, I said earlier that there's two plays you try to run on the goal line, the option and the play pass, fire pass, and, and that's what they that ran that time. They ran a play pass where they fake the ball to the running back, and the tight end re releases outside, and, and Gully does a great job of hitting the tight end on that play. Brian Waters scores a touchdown, and it's 24-14 is what it is if we can kick this extra point. Pretty good football game. You see the North Texas fans there. They're having a great time here. I'll tell you, there's a lot of tradition in this stadium. They're be, they're glad to be part of it. Robbie Hoffman's extra point. Now you can run this thing. You can go for two points, but they don't get it. Yes, sir. Good reaction there because that's a good way to pick up two. And that was Kendrick Burton, number 94. And it was what, what, going. What? Again, what we just saw in this replay is, is we see the fake run and, and, and the play action pass, and they throw out and they run out and throw it to Brian Waters for a touchdown. He makes a good catch falling down there. Tell you, Toby Goen made a pretty good tackle there on a 288-pounder, didn't he? Well, you know what happened today? I was watching the South Car or the uh, South Carolina Tennessee game, and and South Carolina went right down the field, and then all of a sudden they tried a field goal and it was blocked, and the guy ran it back 91 yards for a touchdown and completely changed the outcome of the game. So it's 24-13 now, Alabama, with 47 seconds to go in the third quarter. And this was a fine drive put on by the Eagles of UNT. Nine plays, 67 yards, 317. Now that... Gill was a very convincing drive. That was a great drive, I'll tell you that. And, and, you know, it was made possible by one play. The quarterback draw by Gully was a very, very big play in that particular series. I mean, the touchdown pass was obviously the biggest play, but they set the thing up with that quarterback draw. And, and you know, when you got a quarterback that can run and make things happen, big plus. And when I say a convincing drive, that's exactly what Matt Simon's looking for. He's looking for something that's put together with some perfection, well uh, executed, and pretty doggone convincing. Yeah, that ball goes out of bounds. Alabama's got a choice. They'll probably bring it to the 35. You know, there's been three kickoffs out of bounds in this game. It must be a lopsided ball or something they're using. That, that's very unusual. You know, they used to kick the ball out of bounds because they wanted to keep it away from a dangerous man. McAfee is uh, George McAfee with the Bears in the 40s is when it all started. But, uh, you know, today they always kick it off because they can kick it so far. It's flat on one side, maybe, <laughs> and flat on the other side. 47 seconds to go in the third quarter. Gene Stallings, who won a national championship here in 1993, was with Gill for how many years? 14, 15, uh, 15 years, yes. With the Cowboys. Number 29 is Riddle, the tailback from Tuscaloosa. Justin Ray made a good play there, hit him right in the hole. He gained about a yard, but I'll take second and nine any day. Brian Bergdorf threw a touchdown pass in the last series that Alabama had the football. Bergdorf hitting Malone on a 50-yarder. And then UNT came right back on that 67-yard drive. Fourteen seconds to go in the third quarter. This should be the last uh, play unless we have an incompleted pass, but instead we have a flag-stopping play, and apparently Alabama had somebody moving around that shouldn't have been moving around. Usually that's what the call is, unless there's encroachment, but... We see a little more of that this year. That, that's a new rule that went in effect this year that uh, they can call it on the defense. Yeah. And, it's a, and it's a good rule, too. 
but the procedure call goes against Alabama. I tell you, Gene's not too happy right now. Got the coat off, too. <laughs> His wife's sitting right up here behind us, Ruth Ann, who's a, a native Texan and a, and a really, really fine lady. Gene's from Paris, Texas. Played for Bear Bryant at Alabama, or rather at uh, Texas A&M, and then followed him to Alabama's head coach here. We've come to the end of the third quarter. It's Alabama 24 and the University of North Texas 13. We'll be back with more action after this. We go into the fourth quarter, and that is the score. Alabama 24 and the University of North Texas 13. Well, it's been a great ball game here so far. It, it, and, uh, you know, the, the, the Eagles uh, can go back home and not hang their head. They played a great game, and I hope their fans appreciate it. Second and 14 after the penalty. Bergdorf throwing to the near sideline. He finds Malone. Malone is out of bounds in the 48 in Alabama territory. Avery Wright chased him out of bounds with the big game. Gives Alabama the first down. Girl, what happens here? Bergdorf looks left, looks left, and they got great protection, and he just has all day to throw the ball. And, 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 and you know, you just can't leave a quarterback have that much time to throw the ball. But the main thing is he did. He looked off the people and then threw it back to the right side to Malone. First down on the 48-yard line after a 16-yard pickup, Todrick Malone, who can fly. Leading receiver for Alabama. Alabama on top, 24-13. Incomplete. Is that a, hey, I'll tell you what, not, that's almost a lateral. Well, it, it, it's, it's not. Close. It's, it's close. But, uh, again, they try to get it out there to uh, Marcel West, uh, that the speed burner on this team, and it's just throwing a little bit past him. But I tell you, they will not call it a lateral unless it's really pronounced. You know, if it's anywhere close, it usually goes to the offense, and they don't say it's a lateral. And usually it's going to be a bullet, and that's what that was. Right. Malone splits out wide to the left side on second down 10 on the 48. Riddle, the running back, and the, uh, the tailback. Sissom, the up back. They go to this side. Brown. Brown pushed out of bounds. They don't get anything because Avery Wright, 43, had the, rather, uh, 36, had the play well covered. Now let's take a look at the GTE third quarter statistics. Well, I, for three quarters. I'm, a, I'm afraid the time of possession is going to be really bad here because uh, actually the Eagles at the end picked it up a little bit, but it's 326 yards to 202 yards, 26 minutes time to 18 minutes time. You know, it's, it's been tough on the defense. We need to run the ball and get something more than 19 yards, which includes Gully's long run. This is something Alabama has done today. They've been able to run the ball some. And finally, down goes Bergdorf in a scramble. As Shane McLaughlin, number 91, the senior from Burke Burnett, Texas. And Sterling Guest, number five, from Long Beach, California. And, and Sterling Guest really makes the play happen because he doesn't let the quarterback get outside on the play, and he forces him back inside. they got to get off the field in a hurry so they don't get a penalty for 12 men on the field and an automatic first down. Fourth and ten now. Hayden Stockton gets the punt away, and he hangs this baby high. Smith, the fair catch, takes the ball at the 14 in UNT territory. So the Eagles will have the ball. They're down 24-13 with 13.57 to go in the game. Alabama 24, UNT 13. There's the time remaining, less than 14 minutes at Bryant-Denny Stadium. And it's a beauty here on the campus of the University of Alabama in Tuscaloosa. It was built in 1929 and added to many times. This is a scene outside uh, this morning as the fans file in. And there's a lot of red showing here today. And guess what uh, street we're on? Paul Bear Bryant Drive. There's no doubt about the impact this man has had on Tuscaloosa, the University of Alabama, and college football. Gully is a quarterback, first and 10 of the 13. Fake to the running back. Ball almost taken away. Might have been. I don't know. Did Gully get it back in time? Again, what happened here is the defensive back came around the corner, and, and, and they had a blitz on, but 
What, what, what took place is that defensive back came around the corner and the right tackle just didn't block him. Chris Hood. Keep an eye on Chris, Chris Hood, Hood is, 34. Uh, actually, uh, Chris Hood is a defensive lineman. He's the player we talked about before that was a four-time All-State player in high school. He's got great speed and quickness, 6'1", 278, but he's is, is, is got, he does a great thing here. He tries to, tries to bat the ball, which is illegal. Seven-yard loss, second down, 17, gully to throw, completes it to Red Wine at the 13. Let's go down to Ed Budanero with a very special guest. Ed? we got an old friend of both Merle and Gills down here, Bill Bailey, part of the great Southern tradition of having a state trooper on the sideline that escorts the coaches, and you've seen quite a few, Bill, haven't you? I've been doing this three or four years. I provide security for all the visiting teams. So you've seen uh, every head coach um, through the SEC coming into either Birmingham or in down here. Right. Well, we appreciate it, and Gil and Merle appreciate the ride you gave them yesterday. Right. Back at, <laughs> back we needed you somebody guys. to protect us <laughs> or keep us out of trouble, I guess. Gully to throw. We got to look out. He's got. He loses the ball to the end zone, but it's in incomplete. In, incomplete. He, apparently, the official, the referee says the arm was going forward trying to throw the ball Kendrick Burton number 94 I think Al Ford gave us a little break there Whoa. but again it, it's uh, it's this big rush and uh, uh, what happens here they just uh, it, it, you know it's like let the door open here we come and, uh, and, and it's a four-man rush is what it is they, they don't blitz anybody they just rush four people and overpower you is what they do let's see if his arm is back now no it isn't coming up that's all Toby Gowen to kick from inside his five. And they'll be coming after him with one back. Vaughn is the single back. Now they go back in punt coverage for the return. Ball takes a pretty good roll. Vaughn grabs it. And it's taken away. It is grabbed by number 22, Philip Littlejohn. And Littlejohn goes into he's the end called, zone. He's called it dead. But he's the ball is dead. blown dead. I, on the 30s. He took the ball right away from him. I don't understand this play I at all. I don't either. But Little John did the smart thing. He ran it in there. But I, I, I just don't understand how they could call that a dead ball. But uh, he lets it bounce, and here's Little John. He just catches the ball in the air. There's no way. Unless they're saying they can't advance that. Uh, I guess they're saying they can't advance a fumble is what they're saying. But I thought they changed that rule because the ball just bounces right out of his hands. UNT will have the ball anyway. Great play by Philip Littlejohn, another true freshman. That was a muff. Now, what's the difference <laughs> in a muff and a fumble? There is a difference. Well, I, I, you know, I thought a muff is when, the play, when it hits the player and then you can't advance it. To me, the ball was in his hands and he just not took it right out of his hands. 49-yard punt. First down, 37-yard line of Alabama. Gully under a rush, runs a tries to run away, but can't pull down from behind by Chris Hood, number 34. Boy, those linemen are quick, Gil. They, they really are, and, and they just bring them in in waves. They bring them in in waves. Here they come. Uh, number 75, Shannon Brown. Uh, it, it, it very possibly could be a first-round pick in the National Football League in the draft this April. Second down coming up, 11 yards to go. Gully does a smart thing. He just tries to, uh, he sees the rush coming, and he just tries to get away and, and, and run a quarterback draw, but he just can't do it. They're too good. Second down, 11. They show blitz. Gully pumps once, now throws downfield. It is intended for Red Wine and the coverage. Deshae Townsend made a great play there. He did indeed. Deshae Townsend is one of two players they have on this football team. Uh, from It'll be third down, 11. From Batesville, uh, Mississippi, uh, at, which had the, one of the top championship teams in the high school championship teams in the country. Good double pump fake. This is a play they hit him on early in, in the third quarter, in the second quarter, and Deshae just makes a great play to save a touchdown there. Deshae Thompson, uh, Thompson intercepted a pass last year in the uh, in the uh, Southeastern Conference Championship game. Corlin Grimes is now in. Let's keep an eye on him. Along with Smith and Red Wine is put wide to the left side. Pass over the middle incomplete intended for Smith and a flag goes down. Late flag. There were three red shirts in the vicinity. 
So let's uh, let him sort of sort this thing out and see what the call is. UNT is pointing a finger at uh, Alabama. Defensive pass interference. First down at the spot. First down on the 30-yard line. UNT has the ball, and Gene Stallings is... I'll tell you what. what he, he looks at a football game as war. He did as a player at Texas A&M. He has done the same thing as a coach. I mean, he, he just really goes after it. He wants everything to be perfect. Gully throwing. Gully in, intercepted. Off the hands of Brian Waters and returned to the 29-yard line by Ralph Staten, his third interception of the year. So Alabama gets the football. We have another flag in the play. This one, in fact, we have two flags down on the 30-yard line. Al Ford will call it. Personal foul against the white team after the interception. 15 yards from the spot. First down. You know, I, Murrow, I, I hate to see penalties like that. That, that, Those are frustration penalties. You know, they played such a great football team. What happens here? Brian Winters just bobbles the ball. The same thing he did against uh, Alabama-Birmingham. He bobbles the ball, and uh, they intercept it uh, is, is what amounts to there. Just a, a big play by the safety. By the way, did you see that face mask on Gully? Oh, yeah. Somebody grabbed him there. And, you know, that's the only... The only job that the referee has is to watch the quarterback and protect the quarterback. So that should not go unnoticed. Gully, a rather uh, riddle on the call. He goes to the 46-yard line in Alabama territory. Bama leading by a score 24-13. 10.50 to go. Bro, let me say something about the depth of this football team. They have three offensive linemen that are second team players. And we'll get back to this in just a minute. Freddie Kitchens now at quarterback for Alabama. Avery Wright takes on the receiver, who was Chad Key, number 19, and nails him on the sideline across the way. They've completed that about 20 times today. But these three offensive linemen I was starting to tell you about, Chad Key, the former quarterback here, catches it, and, and uh, what happens is the safety comes up and makes a very, very good play. And Brett Renfro, 43, came over to help uh, Wright just in case. Avery Wright has done a good job here this year for the Eagles. Third down, six. Brown coming wide to the right side now for Alabama. Kitchens in the pocket, has time, and a wide-open receiver, Curtis Brown. Well, that's just a blow in coverage right there is, uh, is what it amounts to. But I think they've got holding uh, on, on the Alabama team here. Let's hope so. Unless it's defensive holding because the ball was thrown. Well, they're going back the other way because that flag was thrown in on the 40-yard line in UNT territory. Well, I started to tell you about this offensive line to show you what kind of depth they have on this football team. Jeremy Pennington was the Gatorade Player of the Year in Alabama. He's a reserve. Will Friend, who was the top player in the in Alabama two years ago, was is a reserve. So that's it. It's a uh, what it is. It's a uh, unnecessary roughness penalty. Oh, here I see it. What what happened is the left tackle, the young man from South Carolina, number 77, Joel Holiday, just hit somebody late. Is what it is, and, the, and Al Ford called that play. Got back for the one he missed, uh, uh, roughing the quarterback there just a minute ago, grabbing him by his face mask, I should say. First down, 10, the ball on the 49-yard line in UNT territory. Kitchens dropping to throw. He's got a wide-open receiver on the 30-yard line, and it's Steger who is finally pulled down by Avery Wright. And my goodness, there was nobody within 10 yards of him. Misdirection is what it is. And, and here again, in, in their top defensive concept, the linebacker has to cover this back. It's misdirection play here. He looks right, and all of a sudden that back just slips out to the left. And 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 and, and get, no, I, I guess I'm wrong. I thought I thought the back had caught the ball. Just Brown catches it for a 38-yard gain on a crossing route is what it amounts to. So it is a first and ten on the 12. It was Steger, and he slipped out there and just 
the linebacker just didn't cover him. Big pile up just about at the line of scrimmage as Steger is stopped again. Steger has been an outstanding performer. In fact, he's been the best offensive player for Alabama today. Steger's gained about 100 yards today is what he has. 99 James, to be exact, I believe. James Patterson on the last tackle. Second down, 10, no gain on the last play. Steger trying to get to the outside, being pursued, and is knocked out of bounds in a final oh, he's gonna call a, He's going to call a late hit out there, is what they're going to do. Lorenzo Washington and Anthony Coleman on the sideline. Boy, that's a tough call right there. Unless they get a face mask. I don't see the face mask if they do. Yeah, he does. He, yeah, that was kind of a nitpicking call. More of a shoulder pad. Yeah, no, nah, he kind of uh, grabbed his face mask there when he reached for him. But it's you a, get your hands on that face mask, you're usually going to get the call. But it's a, it's a five-yard penalty is what it is. It's not an automatic first down. If it's flagrant, then no matter what it is, it's 15 yards in the first down. So you can have second and 40, and it's a flagrant face mask. Uh, you get an automatic first down, even though it's only a 15-yard penalty. Alabama only three penalties today. They've averaged 10 per game this year. So Gene Stallings has to be pleased about that at least. Second down. Kitchens, key touchdown Alabama. This is a very hard play to stop. They line Kitchens up as a tight end, and he just releases inside, and he's so big. Key's about 6'5", 215, and, and, and he just shields his body, and it's impossible to, 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 to uh, make an interception or bat the ball down here. Good, good play, good catch. Touchdown. The big play in the drive is when they slip the back out there for a 38-yard run and a 38-yard uh, play. Proctor for the extra point try. It's now 30 to 13, Alabama. <laughs> we have a personal foul, unsportsmanlike conduct against Alabama. That, uh, I guess, is too much celebrating in the end zone. For the extra point try, Proctor. And it is now 31 to 13. You know, that penalty doesn't bother a whole lot. We'll tell you why when we come back. It is now 31-13, Alabama. Coleman and McKinney are back deep. The kick will come from the 20-yard line. I'll tell you what, this guy's got such a strong leg. Let's see how far he can kick this ball now. The deep backs are up inside the 15-yard line, and William Watts will do the kicking off for Alabama. So we'll see how much the penalty hurts. It's going to hurt some. This ball goes up and doesn't go very far. And it is taken by Waters. Waters at the 35 and is dumped at about the 37. So that's the situation now. Let's go to Ed Boudinero on the sideline. Ed? Thank you very much, bro. You know, Neil, you were talking about how tough Roland Jackson is and what his hand being broken last year. Well, let me tell you how many injuries this kid has. First, his right ankle was sprained. Then he sprained his right knee. Then he sprained his left knee. He's torn a cartilage in his ribs. He's got car torn cartilage in his right knee. And he also had a sprained shoulder. And he still wants to go in, if that's not tough. I don't know what it is. Merle Gill. He's almost as tough as you, Ed. <laughs> <laughs> Ed suit up. Coming across, and did somebody move on the offensive line? They were coming, and coming big time, but apparently somebody moved, and the legal procedure called. That is it. So it'll be first down and 15 for UNT. Matt Simon, seen his kids play very hard today, and you know, Ed was talking about how badly everybody wants to play. Hey, they want to play on this field. This is a very historic field in a historic football city and state. Gully looks out here in the flat. Nothing going there to Mike Boone. I don't see why not. But let, let me just have about a, a minute here, and we'll take an informal vote. <laughs> what we're talking about is 
Who's the player of the game's going to be? Fernando Davis, 55, had the coverage on the play. Loss of, uh, uh, let's see, four yards, second down, 14. Merrill, this is where the defense, they, uh, they, just, uh, they just overpower you is what it amounts to. Four down linemen. Gully under a rush in the pocket, throwing the ball is batted down. Uh, again, that's the, that's the uh, sophomore, uh, Kendrick Burton, that made that play. Curley, 290 pounds. Burton, 288. You know, the interesting thing is here, they just push the people back. They just overpower the offensive line and just push them back. But what, what, what you're seeing is, is a lot of strength from a lot of good athletes. And I, and I said the wrong person here before when I said Burton. It, it, it is not Burton. It's Kendrick that, uh, that made that particular play. Jared Martin is now in at a tight end for UNT on third down. Gully in the pocket throwing and completing to Brian Waters, a tight end. Brian out of bounds near the 40-yard line. So a punting situation will come up. Fernando Bryant chased him out of bounds. Got about uh, 11. Here it is. Gully just stands in there strong and throws the ball. And, and, and he completes it out here, but uh, when you're fourth to third and 18, it's tough throwing to your tight end to, to make a first down. They're gonna go for it on fourth down here. Fourth down eight. Here comes the rush. Gully, not gonna get out of it. Alabama will take over on the UNT 32. Merrill again, they're just overpowered by these people. Powell comes in there, and, and Ozell Powell, as I said before, is a 318-pound junior off the defensive lineman. He just he just overpowers is all he does. And then they got the, the hood coming from the outside with his great speed, and they, you just can't block all these people. You know, the amazing thing is they do it with four people. There's really no blitz coming. So Bama takes over first and 10 on the UNT 34 with 7.49 to play in the game and Alabama leading 31 to 13. Next week, we'll be out in Las Vegas for the game with UNLV and UNT. And we hope you'll join us on Channel 27. Remember, UNT and UNLV will be, will be uh, cousins or brothers in the Big West Conference next year. Kitchen, the quarterback, hands off to... Sisson, and Sisson at the 20, Sisson at the 15, and finally out of bounds at the 13. Calvin Davis, 37, got him out of bounds. Ed Sisson, who has done, carried the ball more and picked up more yards today than any other time this season. In fact, all the games combined, I think, well, not quite. Yeah, maybe so. He's had 25 yards. Sisson he got 21 on that 21 one. yards. You know, they, it's just a, a give to the first man through, and what they've done is they've just worn the defense down right now. They just... Uh, there's just too much on the defense. You can't keep those people on the field that long and play that hard and expect to stand up. First down on the 13-yard line of the Eagles. Kitchen, Riddle, 10-yard line, a gain of three. Justin Ray, number 51 on the tackle. Justin's a, not only a fine football player, he's a fine student. His GPA is... 3.2, something like that. He's a guy that never misses practice. Not in three years has he missed practice. So he's, he's an everyday guy. Well, I tell you, not only do they have some fine football players on this team, they also have some fine students on this team. And as I've said many times, the University of North Texas is a great academic institution, thanks to Dr. Hurley. Second down seven for Alabama. Up the middle, Chogan comes Sisson, and Sisson is just barely inside the five. Merle, what they're doing now, they're just running the ball inside, and that offensive line is just knocking our defensive line off the ball, and, and they just, uh, it's four, five, six yards is what it amounts to. Third down two coming up for the Tide. 
Here you see it is just a, you know, they just knock Duke Lamb. Somebody, it looks like somebody grabs Justin Ray's helmet and, and, and turns his head around on that particular play. But uh, they, they're just blocking everybody. It's just plain zone blocking is what it is. Nothing fancy. They're just straight ahead and blowing them out. Third down two. This time it's Riddle on the carry following Sisson. Gives him the lead block and he goes in for the touchdown. So Alabama has put 37 points on the board with that four yard run. Now Alabama but, will try to add that extra point. You know, it's just a little sweep this time is, is what it is, and he cuts it back inside. You know, they've been running the fullback, and all of a sudden they let the fullback block and, and give it to the tailback, and he runs it in there for a touchdown. They give Riddle equal time is what it amounts to. Proctor automatic. This guy's missed one point after in his entire career. <laughs> Alabama leading 38 to 13 with 607 left to play. What? Alabama on top 38-13. Colvin and McKinney are back deep for this kickoff. It'll be William Watts. This time kicking from the 35. Last time he was kicking from the 20 and came up with a short kick. Normally he kicks the ball out of sight. That's called why they call it a wild thing. And a wild thing sends this one high into the air. It's going to come up short of the goal line, however, at the five-yard line where it's taken by McKinney. And McKinney gets to the 20, McKinney to the 25, the 30, 35, 40, midfield, 45, 40, and out of bounds near the Alabama 30-yard line. Well, I bet right now Gene Stallings is about fit to be tied over on that, that sideline because he is a very, very proponent of the kicking game. When he was with the Cowboys, he used to handle the kicking game for us. That's a great return. What happened is he started up the middle and broke it to the outside, and uh, it was about it was about a 65 yard return is what it was. McKinney had a 60-yard return against Oregon State, and this one was good for 65. Well, let's hope we can score here and get, and, and get 20 points on the board here anyway. Josh Gully back in at quarterback, 19 out of 33, 193 yards as we watch McKinney again on this terrific return. Somebody jumped off there on the left side for Alabama. Hood, Hood jumped off. Now, was he drawn off? I don't know. Hood's very quick. Like he was anticipating. So flags went down quickly, and he was anticipating. Five yards against Hood in Alabama. We'll take that five yards from number 34 any day. It's not much, but it's a lot. Uh, first and five is a lot better than first and ten. Suppose Gene's <laughs> he, he's over there counting up the penalties now to see if he's going to hit ten again today. Well, you know, Gene told us how he has two officials work every practice. Yeah. First down five of the 25. He's a grand individual. These two coaches in this game today are well respected. Gully throwing and getting rid of the ball, and that was okay. He had red wine out there in the pattern. But again, the chase was on. Well, I, I tell you, Gully must feel like there's a sieve up there for an offensive line. He he rolls out here, and he's just trying to avoid getting killed here by, uh, is, it, is it Hood again? Steve Harris. Steve that. Harris that made the play, the second team linebacker. But uh, they just come in waves is what they do. Second down, 10. Grimes, Smith, and Redwine are to the right. Mike Boone is the running back. Contact was made, I believe. So if that's it, it's an auto, it should be a first down. Five and five is 10, isn't it? <laughs> Although uh, Alabama, the line up there is applauding, saying they did it, they did it, they did it. I guess, uh, and I guess they won the argument. <laughs> Who said that? We've got to That's defend ourselves. <laughs> Matt. Matt. Dead ball foul. That was illegal procedure. Well, second Somebody and ten bowled. again. Again, you see Gene Stallings over there. You know, I'll I tell you what, I bet he walks 20 miles on the sidelines during that particular game. And Lou Holtz walks 120. <laughs> not, not, not anymore, though. Gene does a great many things for the community. It's unbelievable what he all does. 
second and ten. Here comes the rush. That little pitch up front. That's the incomplete pass to Mike Boone. A little shovel pass. Very good call. Yep. Excellent call, you know, because you're you trying to do anything you can to slow down the rush. Yeah. Get those linemen to overrun. Right. Coyland Grimes comes into the game now. For UNT. Here's where you need to make one of those half rolls and uh, hope that you can get somebody out there and, and be able to throw the ball before they uh, they get you on defense. This might be a blitz here on Alabama defense. Alabama showing blitz. They've got those linebackers up in the hole. Here they come. Quick throw, ball deflected. It was intended for Brian Smith, but somebody on the line, I think, had a hand on the ball. Might have Fernando Davis, number 55, the linebacker. You know, Merle, uh, the interesting thing is I think Gully recognizes what's coming. He recognizes the blitz. I think he tries to check off to the hot receiver, but the blitz gets there so fast he just doesn't have a chance. They just come right up the middle is, uh, is what they do. Number 25, a corner, Fernando uh, Bryant, who's a, a true freshman playing here on this team. And the linebacker, Davis, didn't get a, he didn't get a hand on the ball. He got a hand on the quarterback. That's, he got, uh, Gully got hit just as he was releasing the ball went into the ground. Now we have a timeout call, 5.45 to go in the game, with Alabama leading 38 to 13. You know, you know, Merle, talking about this program, you know, Gene told us he was going to dress 90 people. I don't think they have 90 people out for football at the University of North Texas, number one. Secondly, we talked about how he uses two officials in practice every day. Well, you know, this is when you're in a program that can afford to do things, that you get these little extras, the two officials. And, 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 you know, those officials being every day help you because they take you into game situations and apprise you of situations that you can't do and you don't make them the same mistake during the football game. And Matt Simon has continued to preach to his kids. This, you're looking at, you're looking at teams that we want to emulate, all of them. We want to be where they are, playing the schedule that they're playing, the Oklahomas and the Kansas Missouris and, and, and the LSUs and the Alabamas. Well, I, I'll tell you this, the Eagle backers can be very proud of Matt Simon and the staff because they do a great job. Fourth down for UNT, fourth down and 10 on the Alabama 30. Time remaining, 5.45. Josh Gully, the freshman quarterback from Grand Prairie South. Rush on, Gully throws, incomplete. See, he got hit just as he was releasing the ball that goes right into the ground. You know, it, it really looks like you have a bunch of all pros playing against high school players. Uh, they, they, they just simply overpower the offensive line. But what happens is, is as you get bigger players and work them in a weight program and get little better athletes, uh, you're going to have more success. Let's look at Dr. Pepper's scores. Penn State rolling over Indiana big time. Penn State number 16. A&M Wax Houston. No problem there. And how about this? Baylor beating TCU by three. And Rice winning by 10 over Southern Methodist. Faust is now the quarterback, 17. Takes the snap, and down he goes by Shane McLaughlin, number 91. I don't know if that was a quarterback draw or just some confusion back there. I think it was probably a quarterback draw. You know, knowing how coaches think, they want to put a quarterback in that comes in off the bench and run a safe play. And, and a quarterback draw is a safe play. But this is a young man that Gene told us yesterday has a great deal of potential. They think that he is their future. And Alabama's had a run of great quarterbacks. Holy samoli if they have. <laughs> Second and 12 after a loss of two. We have five minutes left to play in the game. Alabama with a comfortable 38 to 13 lead led at halftime 10 to 7. Alabama going to the run. And Alexander who is now running back carried the ball taking the handoff from Faust getting out to about the 34. This young man from Oklahoma City Oklahoma. He came here. His father was a coach at the Air Force Academy is what it was. He just hands the ball off. Here's another good running back, a sophomore running back from Chattanooga, Tennessee, that, that if he could stay healthy, will be a big factor in their program here. Third down, six. He's one of those guys that he's either brittle or something. It seems like every time somebody touches him, he has an injury. 
but he's got a lot of ability. Ooh, has he ever. Curtis Alexander, number 32, the running back, tailback. Alexander, no, not this time. It's, uh, yes, it is. Justin Alexander. Ray made a good play there. <coughs> And they're going to force them to punt right here. You don't think they'll try another fake punt, do you? At 38 to 13, I doubt it. I don't know. Gene's, Gene is... Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> no, I'm just kind of kidding here. But I, I, I tell you, I'm really proud of this football team today. I, I think that they've done an absolutely great job. and I, I hope all the viewers are there on November 11th for the Idaho State game because I think it'll be a special game. I think we're going to close with two wins, one at, one at home and one on the road against Louisville. Fourth down, timeout call now by UNT. Now we're going to take a look at the Village Ford UNT players of the game because we have two of them today. Look what Britt Renfro has done. Eight tackles, five solos, one cause fumble, one fumble recovery. And then Josh Gully, 193 yards, one touchdown, 19 out of 36. Fine performance by this freshman who has quite a future. Well, I tell you this, Josh is going to be sore until about Thursday of next week, the way he's really taking a beating out there. Uh, Josh has to put his hat on, so he looks like one of those pro quarterbacks. You know, the first thing they go, oh, here he goes. He's putting his, I guess they handed him a hat that he's going to put on. <laughs> Come on, Josh, you're supposed to put that hat on if you want to be the next Troy Aikman and next Dan Marino. You've got to put that hat on. You know, we're talking about Renfro, and we have a lot today because he's an outstanding performer. He played for Jerry Jones, not that other Jerry Jones. He played for Jerry Jones at Pilot Point and is, was developed into a very fine player there. Uh, Jer Jerry has had his teams in uh, the playoffs so many years. Coach, the real coach. The Jerry real Jones. coach, Jerry Jones. Daniel Pope <laughs> kicking this time. The ball's going to roll dead on the 29-yard line. Merle, I think that's maybe the first time this year that Smith has not caught the ball on a punt. It, it, you know, except if it was supposed to go into the end zone. I don't recall that uh, where he's ever turned one down like that. Jason Mills is now going to come in at quarterback. Pope's kick 28 yards. First down for UNT at the North Texas 29. First down, 29-yard line of UNT, 3.13 left to play in the game. Jason Mills, quarterback draw. 48-yard line. UNT men's basketball season tickets are now only $90. Call 1-800-UNT-2366. See the Eagles play host to Alabama, SMU, and Key. SLC opponents. Uh, you know, Tim Jankovic has been a friend of mine for a long time. A very, very solid basketball coach. Mills got eight on the quarterback draw. Second and two. Mills to throw. On the sideline. The ball is caught by Red Brown. Red the turn. The 15, the 10, the 5. Touchdown. Troy Redwine with his sixth touchdown of the year. Well, he had some time to throw the ball. He double punched. The, the, the corner fell for it. And uh, and all of a sudden, Redwine is behind for a touchdown. 63 yards. Troy had had one for 54 earlier this year. I bet old Troy wishes he could stay around here for a couple more years and, and play with Josh Gully for a couple more years because I think that'd be a great combination. But if there's one position that you can usually find, it's wide receivers. Well, in this situation, no doubt UNT will go for the two-point conversion. This is something they can work on, and that's what they're going to do. 38-19 now, Alabama. You think it's a throw? Full house. A throw back to the tight end. <laughs> Loop to the end zone incomplete, so they don't get it. 38-19. No good. Two 
26 remaining. Well, Merle, I don't know how you feel, but, but I'm going to leave here tonight with a very, very good feeling because I, I think this has been an excellent football team. I think the tradition of just playing it against Alabama is really something special, and I think that Matt Simon really had his team prepared well for this game. You've got to give him credit for that. Well, he certainly was pleased with the first half as he came off the field in his comments there. You could hear it in his voice and see it in his face. And uh, Matt, I'll tell you what, if he feels the other way, he's going to tell you, too. No, there's no question. Matt calls it as it is. And I, I really don't know of a, of a more level person. You know, he reminds you a lot of Tom Landry. Doesn't have a lot of highs, doesn't have a lot of lows, tells you exactly how it is, and does a great, great job with the players. He does an excellent job with the players. And I think that's a big thing of being successful in, in coaching is to be able to communicate with the players. He not only communicates with the players, he also has an excellent football mind. And when discipline is required, you can believe that uh, he will present that side of his personality as well. Well, you and I have been outside of his office when he's expressed uh, some of his uh, concern about someone that hasn't done things correctly. You have to put a thicker door on his office. Marcel West will be back as a single guy uh, to receive the kickoff. Let's see if uh, UNT will kick the ball away or will go for an onside. Uh, Alabama's got, looking for it. They've got their hands team on the field right now is, is what they have. They, what they do is they put all the backs and wide receivers out there, and they call it the hands team. There's a now little push kick. Now, let's see if they can catch this ball. No, you can't do that. Mad scramble for it. Flag goes down. See, he's going to call in a, 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 a failure to allow the man to free ki fair catch the ball because he did signal for a fair catch. If, right. he had, if he had not called for a fair catch, then he could have done what he just did. Brian Waters went up over the top. Trying to get a hold of that ball. <laughs> well, we can't hear you, Al, but we get the message. The penalty is against UNT. Interfering with the uh, receiver is going to be the call. So the ball is brought to the midfield stripe after a 15-yard penalty, and uh, the ball was fielded at the 35 or thereabouts. Two minutes, 25 seconds remaining. Alabama leading by a score of 38 to 19. Now into the quarterback is Lance Tucker, who makes his first appearance of the day. He is the fourth quarterback for Alabama. Again, Madden is the ball carrier. Again, what it is is just a uh, just a simple handoff to the first back through, and and I think right now Gene's just trying to get this last two minutes and eight seconds out of the way and bringing in everybody that's suited up for this game. So there's a lot of parents that will go home happy and say how their son played against the University of North Texas. See a lot of new numbers in there right now. And a lot of North Texas mamas and papas are going to be very pleased the way their sons played against Alabama. Minute 44 remaining. This is Madden. This guy's really quick. He's a freshman. 5'9 and 200 pounds. One done by Justin Ray. Number 51 after a gain of about four. They, they've got a lot of young players on this team. Montoya Madden is a, is a redshirt freshman and actually has a lot of ability. You know, Gene Stallings was talking about the penalties that Alabama is suffering uh, uh, over the next few years. Uh, 14 and, scholarships. Yeah, and yesterday when you asked him, well, how do you handle it, Coach? He said, boy, we better recruit right. We cannot make any mistakes on the people that we choose. They've got to be the right people to play. Hand off. Not too much on that one, but uh, it uses up several seconds of the clock as John Tanks. Like I say, I think uh, I think uh, Biebs, uh is anxious to get home and uh, sit down and relax a little bit today. 38-19, Alabama over UNT. 48 seconds left to play. You know, one of the great sponsors we have is Gatorade. They, they and not only are they a great sponsor, they're a great product. 
And, and you know, they sponsor the high school player of the year. They do so many things for athletics. And is Matt going to be happy when he gets doused after every game, right? Yes. <laughs> Second down eight for Alabama. The pitch comes to the tailback. And he goes to the 33. That's Montoya Madden. I don't know if we'll have another play or not. The ball is uh, down to the 33. Avery Wright making the play. There will not be another play. And Dean Stallings and Matt Simon will meet Rickard in the middle of the field. Duke Lamb made the last uh, tackle, and I think he's also down. And Gene Stallings is no doubt telling Matt Simon, hey, you guys play tough. Normally, it's just a quick handshake and see you later. But uh, Gene Stallings and Matt were having a nice conversation there, and maybe we can pick up from Ed Budanero uh, what that conversation was all about. But uh, we also see a great mixture of Alabama and UNT players in the middle of the field. You like to see this because this is mutual respect, and you like to see that in collegiate football. So Alabama defeats UNT by a score of 38 to 19 with a big second half after Alabama led at halftime 10 to 7. Let's go down to Ed and Matt Simon. Thank you very much, bro. Matt, team played very hard. Your assessment of the game? Well, you know, I felt real good about the way our kids went out and competed against these guys. Uh, they have a very fine football team. Um, they're uh, they're very impressive in their defensive front. We did some things and executed our offense a little better um, and, and did some things that kept us in this game, and that's what I was proud of, and I was really proud of our defense for going out and hitting these guys and playing hard. What was it that uh, Gene Stallings and you talked about at the center of the field? Well, you know, uh, both of us wanted to come through this one and stay healthy, and uh, and I think both of us did, at least uh, relatively healthy, particularly considering as many injuries as, as we've had at this stage of the game, and I know that they've got some big games coming up uh, for them that, you know, they're obviously really concerned about, and we were both glad to get through this one without any hit, big hits. We have a good game, Matt. You guys, thanks again. Appreciate it. You bet. Merle, Gil, we'll send it back up to you. Okay, Ed, and... Uh, it was a good ball game, Gil. I mean, there again, you, you see progress all the time with this young UNT team, and I think it's progress because of the kind of competition they're playing. No question about it. They've gotten better, and, and you know, it's going to help them sell recruits to come play for the Eagles, and that's the whole thing about this exposure, recruits, and all of a sudden you have a winning tradition. You know, as an example, at Alabama, they have five football players in the Football Hall of Fame, the, the pro Football Hall of Fame. And you know, you talk about Don Hudson, you talk about Joe Namath, Bart Starr. You know, they, they've got such great tradition here because they've won for so many years. And you know, I think that's what's going to happen with the Eagles. We're going to build up some tradition. We've got 26,000 students, a great university, and I see great things happening in the future. Okay, Gil. So Alabama defeats the University of North Texas 38 to 19 and will return to Bryant-Denny Stadium after this from your local station.